no stopping us Fly without boarding pass Couldn't catch me, I've been moving fast Call me a shooting star Let them know who you are Flying up in a bar Wish on a star Time to show them who's in charge Call me a shooting star Said I might be big in a game like she went and got them breast implants I said I'm moving too fast, didn't even get a glance I'm ready to eat up track like I'm seated in a restaurant yeah. If you have swag like mine, you know it's best to flaunt yeah. We are hating because you want Shining like it's neon, drop like kings of Leon Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out so don't be mad at me I'm with my strategy When I turn up, they know what just have to leave Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out, so don't be mad at me Infiltrate, I'm with my strategy When I turn up, they know what just have to leave Yeah, 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 shoot, 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 shoot Yeah, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot Yeah, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot Yeah, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tottenham Away, the best place to be in town if you're a Spurs fan. Good evening, good evening, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Yes, we have something to smile about. How sad we've become. Uh, very quickly, before we begin, I just want to say a big, 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 big thank you to our new channel sponsor. Yes, we have a channel sponsor. Big up to Arsenal Tears, the drink <laughs> for all those who are thirsty on a Sunday afternoon. Thank you. To Arsenal Tears for sponsoring Cut Them Away. Big up. Um, uh, oh man, I'm 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 such a loser. I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left, man. I'm telling you, I'm broken. Um, guys, look, smash the like, subscribe. We've got 160 people watching already. Amazing respect to you. If you're not a Spurs fan, welcome here as well. Let's quickly go around and say hello to everyone. We've got Strasbourg Steve, a Newcastle fan. Uh It only made sense to get Steve on for this one. So, uh, Steve, mm. how you doing, brother? You must be happy. Yeah, yeah. I can't lie. I was saying backstage, I think this league, um, this weekend in, in the league, it might be a sign of things to come, you know? The only top six team winning was Manchester City. All the others didn't win. 
but the other two that won were Villa and Newcastle. It may be a sign. And by the way, those are the three richest owners in the league, those three clubs. Um, and if the rules allegedly change up this year, um, we could see in the future those three teams battling out for titles because someone's got a dethrone city because no one else wants to do it except Liverpool one time. Greatest well, one wonder. You know we'll get we'll get into it all. We'll get into it all. Um, just a quick shout out to everyone. Dan, um, how you doing, man? You're right. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> after Saturday, <laughs> I mean, well, after this afternoon, now seeing that Arsenal score, I'm all right. <laughs> so I'm all right now, mate. <laughs> you're right. You're right. He's all right. He's all right. In uh, uh he's, he's he's helped us out. Um, mm -hmm. Adrian, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, there's nothing like an Arsenal, wrong, wrong like an Arsenal loss to cure a Spurs hangover, is there? You know, so uh, exactly. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll get into the game, won't we? But I'm fine, mm. thank you. Good man, good man. I'm back on the channel, Lily White Lane TV. We've got Robbie in the house. Robbie, my brother, how you doing, my man? Yesterday I felt a bit rubbish, but tonight's been a very good evening. So doing a lot better after watching that Arsenal game. I do you know I can't I can't believe that literally our season depends on laughing at Arsenal. Like what have we become? Like literally. Do you know what? <laughs> I, I got so overexcited. I, I put this on Twitter. The seven hundred million pound red bottle tops. <laughs> Just that's why I said I'm a loser. Uh, you know, I admit it though. I'm honest. I'm, I'm honest. Um, look, good to have everyone on. I think a few others might be joining us later. Mm. But look, before we get into laughing at Arsenal and talking about the Premier League mm. and whatnot, this Saturday, um, well, yesterday, obviously Spurs played Newcastle away. Myself, JP, and Iggy, we went up there. Got, I mean. Up at 5 a.m. on the train at 7, got there just after 10. Two hours of socialising, having a few drinks, got to the stadium. And Did you have a good time, at least? Mate, have a good time? the Geordies are great. The Newcastle mm -hmm. peoples are wonderful, friendly. The banter was top draw. The, mm. the, the, the pub was the bar. It's, it's a cracking town. It really is. I've got, I've got nothing but mm. love for the Geordies. Mm. But... No man, it's it's stank. We we we, we travelled four hours to get up there, and then whilst we were there, the game like we'll get into it. Let's just get into it. I mean, I I I thought it would be a draw. My prediction was a draw because I thought we don't keep clean sheets, but um, Northern Newcastle, you know, your defence has been really shaky recently. Oh yeah, I thought it'll probably be a draw. But then. At the back of your head as a Spurs fan, you're thinking there's a lot of injuries to Newcastle. Really, we've got a chance to win this. But what what happened, what happened, I think has turned a lot of fans. And I saw a complete shift. It wasn't knee-jerk. This isn't knee-jerk because we've had bad results against Wolves where we were out tactically mastered. Um, we've had mm. managers from mid-table teams like Fulham outthink us. Then... There's the 4-0. We're down 4-0 at Brighton. We're getting pumped at Fulham. This wasn't something new. This isn't a mm. neat thing. This isn't a one-off game. This keeps happening. And I think a full-strength Spurs team against the weak in Newcastle to get absolutely popped like that, I think fans are now worried. And it's caused a division. Some are blaming Ange. Some are blaming the players. Some are blaming Levy and Enoch. Some are blaming everything. But it's almost like, here we go again. Look, Steve. That's just my quick thinking on it before we break it down. As a Newcastle mm. fan, what, what was your kind of thoughts about before you went into the game and then after? Oh, yeah, I thought we would lose because of – so the injuries thing has been like the topic and discussion around Newcastle United and why, you know, only like two, three weeks ago we were like 10th. And you know? also that was the that was that. So – the thing is, if you're going into a game and you recognize this is not the strongest team that, you know, we can put out there and Spurs are full strength, except I think you had maybe one injury, but it was close to your best 11, maybe not best performing 11, but on paper, that's what most people would pick. Um, mm. I just thought 
there was too many. I thought I thought we would score. I said three two Spurs to be honest. I said three two because I was like we can't defend. But recently we've kind of got our act together, even with a weak inside. So going into the game, yeah, I I I was kind of thinking that we would lose. Um, but I just think after those 15, 10 minutes, it was um it was it was more Spurs than the Newcastle in, in the in the early part of the game. But once we got the quick one, two, bang, bang, which we've done that to Man City before, we've done that a few other times. We've had some very, very big home win since Eddie House came in. Um, but after those two goals, I was like, I think we could actually win this, you know. Um, I was just shocked you didn't score. I was completely shocked you didn't score against a right winger at right back and Jacob Murphy, a right back, a crappy right back at right center back, Fabian Scher at center back, and Dan Byrne at left back. We didn't have Livermento. We didn't have Hall. We didn't have this guy, that guy, you know, East, um, uh, not Isak. Uh, we didn't have Joel. Yeah. I just, I just thought like, yeah, we could score, but we can't defend against, you know, a, a good team in Spurs. So I was completely shocked. I was completely shocked that we won. Um, so yeah, I, I was thrilled, but I was, I, I was just, I just could not believe you didn't score. And I don't think I don't think uh Dubravka had to make any sort of wonder save or anything. You had two shots on target out of eleven with 73% possession. But it was an off the ball, off the ball. We were just just far better, really. And I think we didn't really have to focus on defending Timo Werner and Brennan Johnson. I don't rate those guys, not even the defenders that defend against them rate them. We're focused on Son and Madison. And they didn't do anything. Um, Timo Werner had chances for you guys, and he completely screwed it. He's completely screwed it. Yeah. Um, if Timo Werner puts one of those chances away early, it's a, it's a different game. But Timo Werner's not a really good player. He's not a finisher <laughs> at all. He is not a finisher. And Spurs fans, if you rate that guy, you deserve everything you get. I can't lie. You deserve everything you get. If you rate Timo Werner and you want him, he's not good. He's not. Leipzig did not want him. And then you'll have fans saying it's a farmer's league. So why is a far – all right, let's say that's true. Let's say Leipzig is a farmer's team, farmer's league. They don't even want that player no more. So it's just kind of funny how things play out. But, look, we were very good against Spurs. Um, that's one of our best performances tactically of the season. Um and yeah, we uh we clear clearly uh past two times we've just crushed you at uh, St. James's Park. So I'm pretty happy with that. And now we could get top six, which is let crazy. me um let me bring in so. Dan. Dan, so <clears throat> briefly, what, what what were you thinking before we played Newcastle and what was your thoughts after it? Before Newcastle it was blatantly obvious we were going to concede goals we do every game. What is it now? Two clean yeah. sheets in 25, I think it is, or even 26 now, something like that. So it's yeah. obvious that we're going to concede goals. But knowing that half their team is busted, basically, yeah, and we pretty much had a full team now, I still didn't expect to win, but I thought we can go there and get a draw. And... <laughs> What else can I say, really? Newcastle just tore us a new one. Simple as that. The way Newcastle done it, it totally showed everything that me, Alan, Eustel, and a couple of others have been saying for a long time now, there's something not right with this system. When on the third goal, you've got every player sitting in, the in their half, and it just gets lobbed over you like an old school 1980s, and they score. It just about says everything. Our team got outplayed. Our manager, how can I say that he even got done on tactics because he ain't got no tactics except kick the ball forward. And you've done us like a kipper, mate. End off. You deserved everything you get. And I think Spurs were that shockingly poor that we didn't just make, that Newcastle didn't just play good. We made them look like Real Madrid, basically. Barcelona, whatever team you want me to relate it to. 
we were that poor it took them up another level as well but they they, they was quality they deserved every, everything they got and we deserved everything we got yep we did deserve it um guys i forgot to mention i'll do it now quickly before i do forget again i've got a bit of positive big up to the ladies they beat leicester city 2-1 today in extra time um and the Spurs ladies are through to their first ever FA Cup final. Maybe they can do what the men have struggled mm. to do for 791 years. Mm. Big up to the ladies. <laughs> Hopefully they win it. Give us a little bit of something to be proud about. Um, Adrian, so before the game, I think you predicted a 2-1 win. Mm. Um, <laughs> how do you feel now that we've put in, not, not so much about the loss, it's just a game. The, the way the whole game went, everything about it just stinks of everything that's... Well, Newcastle probably deserve their win. Uh, and uh, in particular, I mean, if you, when you've got a bad performance, hard to pick out, you can pick out scapegoats, but then you look at the whole team performance in general, didn't you? I mean, Van der Ven definitely wasn't on his best. He couldn't stand up. And, and Porro, I, I've never seen... I've been a critic of Porro. He's got fantastic technique. As a player, but he's not an inverted fullback. Let's be fair, he's not. I mean, what makes me laugh about that is the fact that if we're interested in someone who Conor Gallagher, someone who I don't want, right? I think Porro could do that job in midfield. He's got the engine and he's got the technique and he's got the vision and he's got the crosses. So you could play Porro as a right sided midfielder. I mean, and then it's an away game as well, like keeping on to it. It's an away game, right? So usually, if you wanted to go with Bentacor, shame Sa was left out. If you wanted to go Bentacor and Pursum, and I, and I like the team lineup when it was there, I thought if it goes for us, if the midfield clicks, we'll, we'll be okay, we'll win this game. But it didn't. So, I mean, so what you could do is the manager, I mean, it's, it's you know, now I'm being a hindsight critic, it's clever to be one afterwards. You could have gone for a more dynamic and defensive option with the team to start with and then introduce more attacking players afterwards. So you could have gone with Sarah and Kulazeski in tough away games. I know Kula's in poor form, but he would still do a job for you there. Like, you know, he would, you, we wouldn't have lost 4-0 if Kulu, we might still have lost the game, but wouldn't have lost if Kulu and Sarah were on, on that side. I don't think we'd have lost it. And this has been a big problem all season still, our midfield. It just, when it's good, it's very good, but it's also flaky. You know, and 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 this is this is a problem. I can understand why Ange wants a dynamic midfielder. He doesn't even mention a number six, does he? Which I mean, which you know we would go for. You know, so yeah, we were all right up until the first goal, as Steve said. We're all right up to the first goal. Skeeted two quick second ones, and now so now we've got a mountain to climb. We're either going to pull one back, or they're going to get the killer third goal. And it was one of them, wasn't it? And we haven't got – I remember when we came away from Villa and we went to Fulham and the fans were going, oh, Spurs think they could just turn up at Fulham and win. This wasn't the situation going to Newcastle this time. So there is there is something I, – I see – we don't, we, we're not – you know, I mean, Ange isn't transparent. He's not going to give away what they do in the training ground when the press are moved out so they can't see what goes on. But uh, – and look, positive you take Ange is having a real hard look at the squad this season. A real hard look, and there will be changes. And everywhere he's been, he's been absolutely ruthless. He has had massive clear outs wherever he's been. And you know, I mean, we know that we know that that first chance come to Werner, it wasn't a, a tap in because he got he got a bit in front of the ball. I thought when that ball come to him. Just get it on target. That's what you'd expect. Yeah, yeah. And and the other one as well. I mean, they weren't, they weren't like easy chances. Oh, but, come on. They weren't hard. Well, the first one, if you look at his foot, I looked at his foot, I thought he... He, he should have tried to header the ball. He didn't even attempt yeah, to yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. He should, but he's not a finisher, and I'm not a fan anyway. So I'm not, I'm not going to stick up for him that way. But I didn't think they were like stonewall walk tappings. Like, they weren't. Right, beginning of the game, I think the shutters come down when he sees the ball in front of the goal. He's just not a natural finisher, and that's no good for us because we won't never win a league title, and that's what we should aim for, not top four. Mm. We'll never win a league title if our front three don't score goals. 
I've seen totally. better from Johnson recently. I've seen, oh, I've seen, well, you know, I'm still like that with him, but yeah. I've seen better. You know, keeping either of those two, I'll, I'll send Werner back. Seriously, I really would. And that, Steve, they had a game plan because whenever Son got the ball, they was on him like a rash. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, see, see, stop, see, stop. see, see, Adrian, I, I want to come into Werner in just a minute, right? Because right. this Werner is dividing the fan base. I'm actually going to do a video on it this week because mm -hmm. I actually think now the whole Werner thing is pathetic. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I just want to get, I just want to get um, Robbie's take. Uh, Rob Frank with a super chat. It's okay, guys. We won in life. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I, I, do you know, in fact, let me, let me read you a tweet I put out um, on the on the 16th of March. I said, our fans were proud being humiliated at home to Chelsea. How can I take this seriously? We won in life. What a loser mindset. I got pummeled pummeled mm. by our fan base for saying that since mm. then pumped at fulham pumped at right um, newcastle pumped up dude but we won yeah. in life okay um robbie what's your take on it bro on yesterday's game uh i think look first off i want to give credit to newcastle i thought they were really good yesterday the players mm. who came in due to injury as well really did step up. Isaac, I mean, what a player that guy is. What a player. If we're looking for a proper finisher, he should be the guy we're going for. Anthony Gordon as well. But from us, I just thought we were really cool. I thought at the beginning it was quite into when Werner again, missing two big chances. I, I don't want to go into it too much about him, but all I'll say is there's there's a reason there's a 15 million price tag for him. Mm. There's a reason Leipzig want to get rid of him. There's a reason that he only scored 10 goals in two years at Chelsea. And for me, if you're an attacking player and you're not putting away chances like that, you're not good enough for this club. And from there, we can see the goal. And it just looked like we crumbled. It looked like we crumbled. We can see the second, like a minute after. And it just looked like we downed our tools. And one of the most frustrating things for me were that we were just completely and utterly physically boss yesterday. The amount of jewels in the air and, you know, Newcastle, they were completely and utterly physically bossing us. And yeah, we had 70% of possession, but it means absolutely nothing if you're not doing yeah. anything with that ball. And I think you said it before, Stel, when you watch Man City, when you watch Liverpool, when you watch some of these other sides and they have all the ball, it's constantly going forward. Whereas a lot of our possession is just Vicario and Romero. You think for what, two shots on target with 11 or something, it's, it's not good enough for me. It's not good enough. I still think the manager deserves to be back. He deserves time. And if he gets the required players to fit the system and then he fails, fair enough. I'll hold my hands up and then maybe look at replacing him or bringing in someone else. But I've also got to criticise him when I think he gets gets things wrong. And for me, we're 2 0 down half time yesterday. Why is he not making substitutions? He makes subs when he goes 3 0 down. Yeah, we can see from the corner, which is a whole different kettle of fish, defending from set pieces. But when we went 3-0 down, we were actually controlling the game a little bit more when we made those subs. And it's just like, mm. why wait those <clears> extra 10 minutes to see if the same team has performed poorly for the first 45 step up in the second? I just thought it was a collective yesterday. The players weren't good enough. The manager made some questionable decisions and the timing of the substitutions I didn't like. It was just a, a horrible day at the office. Yeah, it was a horrible day. Um, I think... For me, right, being there watching it and um, ev everything about it has, it literally felt like every bad moment under every previous manager. It really was that here we go again moment. And I could see mm. it. The, the, the players came over to Madison and I think two others, they came over to clap the fans. And the fans said, go away. Like, no one was like, fuck off, fucking go away, get out. That, that, bear in mind, Chelsea, we lost 4-1. They got a standing ovation and clapped off the pitch when they got battered 4-1. This time round, <laughs> the, the change, it was like chalk and cheese. This time it's get out of here. We don't want to, we don't want to hear it. And and I think, you know, Adrian, you say how you know Andrews has a big clear out, he gets rid of all the there's players on the pitch that he brought in that were atrocious. Mm -hmm. I've been saying all season, and I keep saying it, and I keep saying it, and I keep saying it. Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner against the top 10 teams, most of the time they go missing. I'm not blaming them for the loss, but I'm just trying to point out, where was Brennan Johnson yesterday? 
Where was Timo Werner? They were awful. They weren't the yeah. only ones who were awful. Sun was non-existent. Kulu mm -hmm. came nothing. Madison was, he tried, but it wasn't good enough. Bissouma, shocking. Shocking, right? So I, I, I don't understand what is going on with, with, with the fan base who thinks Ange is going to turn these this team into some kind of special team or... You know, in the summer we're going to sign eight brilliant players, and there you go. Ange is Ange is going to turn it around. It's just delusional, and and you know what? Ange does need to be criticised because Robbie said at half time, no subs. Why not? Why wait till we're three 0 down? Well, like, what are you waiting for? Mm. Why, why can't we change the way we play sometimes? Why can't we be a little bit deeper if we're being you know? Literally, their goalie would just kick it long. He was like. You know, you, you know, you see kids in the playground and there's a kid in goal that doesn't want to be in goal, but he's in goal because he's a shit player and he just gets told by all the other kids, you're in goal. Yeah. So, yeah, it, makes, great... it makes right. you wonder what was said at half time, Joe, so, because, because he makes... Right, Adrian, 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 right? You've got the kid in goal who doesn't want to be in goal and, he, and all he does is he gets the ball, he drop kicks it like a, like an NFL player, just drop kicks it. That's what Newcastle did. They just punted one long and then wipe out that whole... So all 11 players on the pitch just get bypassed and Van der Ven is there, you know, trying to mop it up. And you think, why, why don't we change it a little bit? But you can't say these things because our fans, they lose their minds if you criticise the manager. But my point is this. With Mourinho, <clears throat> he's not flexible. He's too pragmatic. In comes Conte. He's rigid. He never changes it from the back three. Now we've got Ange. He's stubborn. He never changes it. Then we had Poch. He starts the wrong players in big games, in wrong positions. He does weird things. Poch is at fault. Conte's at fault. Um, Jose's at fault. Why can't we now do the same for Ange? Why can't we say, hold on? If you're gonna if you're gonna bash those players, those managers with the stick of they're not good enough, then why can't we do it with this guy? Or is it because Actually, it's not the manager that's the problem. All managers should be criticised. All managers do things that are wrong. Mm. But is there a bigger issue here that we're not prepared to talk about? Ange deserves to be criticised because mm -hmm. he should adapt in certain scenarios. I've said it. Conte, Jose, all of them should adapt. They should all adapt. doesn't mean you change your philosophy. It doesn't mean you stop playing possession-based football. It doesn't mean you stop playing um, quick, give-and-go football. It doesn't mean you, you change your formation. Just tinker it, tweak it, or what some people call a plan B. I don't care what you call it. It's all the same thing at the end of the day. We're just saying, just change it a little bit. Yeah. It's, I don't perplexing. it's, it's substitutions are perplexing because you made substitutions at half, at half time in the last game. In this game, it didn't. It makes you wonder what he says to the players in the changing room, whether he give them a rollick and say, look, you got 10 minutes to sort this out or else. You know, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I don't know with the substitutions. Uh, my... I've been, I mean, a lot of Spurs fans have criticised the front for him, rightly so, but I've been banging on about our midfield. It's just the inconsistency in midfield. If we can't win a midfield battle, we're not winning games. It's that simple. Most games are won and lost in midfield. You all know that. I don't know to tell you that. But like, and it's just not, it's just, not, when is it clicked? When was the last time our midfield clicked? And, and we're going on about time. from three. It's a long time, Dan, isn't it? You know, I mean, like a few games. So, so it, uh, Obviously, Ange wants to strengthen the midfield or bring in other players, and that might help. You know, the competition might help shake them up a bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what can you say? I mean, like, uh, I think the players must take their share of the blame as well. The manager's due criticism because, like, and what about intelligent awareness on the field, right? I, I, played, I played at fullback. I was useless, right? I'll admit, I was crap, right? And... And but even I knew that when we were getting when when we were playing and I was always looking around to see who's around me, the opposition and all that, making sure that if things weren't going our way, I I played I stayed deeper. Where's Poro's intelligent awareness? Where is it? You can forgive Van der Ven. Where Ange tells him to be, Adrian. Where Ange tells him to be. Look, this is the problem. You're also he's an inverted fallback, a clues in fallback. Right, mm -hmm. which means you're a defender first and foremost. That's what he's he an is. inverted wing right? back. Well, 
Totally well, different. Like, yeah. Well, he has to be able to. He has to be aware of what's going on around him. Like how can he when he's up at the halfway line where the manager tells him to be? on the far post or standing standing five yards in from the touchline when a winger's not even goal side of him, and then when a ball gets lobbed over the top, he gets caught out. Now I happen to think my my appreciation of Poro has gone up what I've seen of him this season because he's technically mm. such a good player, but he's not an inverted fullback. I totally agree, and I've said that to you before. Look, the more and more I talk about this, the more and more I say it how it is. I'll just put, I'm just going to say it blunt here. Ange is not going to work. His system is not going to work. We're not going to get the best players on the planet that you would need to play this way on a regular basis, but even if you had the best players on the planet, this style is not going to work in the Premiership. Not game in, game out. The best we can hope for is a fourth place with him, yeah? This style of play, it's not happening. We will concede too many goals every season without fail. And just now got me to the point where I'm just thinking he's one of two things. Is he just that bloody naive that he can't, that he just don't smell the coffee? Or is he that just bloody ignorant that he's not willing to change? And he says he's not willing to change. And it blatantly showed when we get before the first goal, we had balls coming over us, down the middle, everything, and then we concede. Mm. Straight away, a good manager sits there and says, do you know what, boys, something ain't working here. Come back a little bit, take a bit of pressure, and then we press forward again after 10. Nope, carries on, 2-0 down. Mm -hmm. Half time, makes no subs, 3-0 down. Then my man makes subs. Exactly the same mistakes he made against Fulham. He made the same issues with Wolves and other things. Ange Ball is not going to work in the Premiership. Now, I don't want Ange out, but for me, until the end of the season and he gets his summer transfer, we'll wait and see, yeah? But then after that, with me personally, he's got six months. And if I don't see my manager wanting to at least try a couple of different things, do you know what? I don't care if we win the game or not. At least try it and change something when it's not working. If he just sticks to Ange Ball and Ange way only, six months, get him out. Because his way, it just is not going to win a premiership. It's a possibility for a cup, but when you go up against someone like City, Arsenal, <laughs> Fulham, Newcastle, his way don't work. Ange is not going to work. And we're never going to get the players that can play his way. Poro well, also, is always up there because it's where he's told to be. Same as Udoji. We, last bit I'll say on this. Here's the biggest joke of it. I'm sitting there with my wife who has only just got into football and only just understood what offside means. We're sitting there watching the game. My wife says to me, like, Dan, why are all the Tottenham players, like, in Newcastle's side of the pitch? Shouldn't we have a defender back or something? I said, I oh, know. It's Ange Ball. And we got to watch it just in case the next thing you know, the ball comes over, they run down the net and score the goal, just in case that happens. And, and by the way... Work. You can't do that against Anthony Gordon. You have to. Oh, here's the thing with Anthony Gordon. What is it? Time after time after time after time, Anthony Gordon has taken souls from defenders in a 1v1 situation because he will cut left, cut right, cut left. He's got quick feet, good with Brilliant both feet. You can play right, left. I, I, I was completely wrong about him. When we first bought him, I, I and you know what? You know what it is? I didn't watch too much of Everton, but when I did, I was like, he's talented, but for the money, I was completely wrong about him. The guy's been no, exceptional. I mean, the player of our season. Player no, of the Steve. season. Uh, the guy that was actually phenomenal yesterday was uh, Harvey Barnes for me. Harvey Barnes, very because he was passing. He the passing was excellent. Way to pass uh, everything. Yeah. The way he destroyed Marwan Vandevan on the left yeah. was actually like it was. It was like watching like a three was 80 very plus good. movie. Yeah, but Van der Ven, Van der Ven, right? He's getting a bad, he's getting a bad rap here. Like, he's getting a bad rap here. I, I, I think I feel sorry for Van der Ven here because, um, right. You could tell, can I just say something quick about Van der Ven, and then you can just quickly? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell that he's not fit. Do you remember when he just came back from the squad and Dragerson went straight to the bench? Like, give him time. Bring Van der Ven off the bench. Give him a couple of minutes. Not straight up in the 11 and tell him, like, oh, by the way, you have to run and uh, clear the ball. 
400 miles an hour. The, 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 the tricks, he is fit. Otherwise, let me, I, I'll tell you what's going on, right? By the way, um, uh, William, thank you for being a channel member for 12 months. A user with a super chat. He says, you know, every time I watch Spurs, you know in the last first 15 minutes which way it will go. If we fans can see what's coming, why can't Ange? It is true. Fun. You can kind of see what's happening. Um, I agree with you, A user. Thanks for the super chat, bro. The, the, the issue I've got is this, right? Spurs, in terms of scoring goals, have been the fourth highest this season. So that kind of explains why we've been fourth. It's about right. And we're only 10 goals off Arsenal um, who are top. So you can close that gap if you just bring in a player that can score 10 goals, which is why I'm against Timo Werner. If, if you look at the goals we've conceded, it's massive. Like we are, We've conceded something like 25 more goals than Arsenal, 20 more than Liverpool and City, something stupid like that. So that's the problem. But then when you look at the shots we've conceded, it's low. We haven't conceded a lot of shots against us. We're actually equal with Liverpool, Man City. So how can you have such a bad... Um, how can you concede so many goals that yet the amount of shots you concede are so low? It's because the quality of the goals we concede are insane. Like we give away high, high quality chances, big chances. So the XG against us is huge. And when I and when I watch it, this is what I'm seeing, right? And I'm, I'm talking to you as a coach now. I, I, I said this to I said this to Dan earlier <clears throat> that when you defend, there's principles of defending. We call it the key principles of defending. And when it comes to um, the, the basics of defending, are uh, uh, delay, dictate, and deny. So delay is when they when they're attacking, slow them down, slow down the attack. D dictate is can I direct them to go this way? Can I direct them to go that way? So dictate the direction of the attack. And the last one is deny, which is right, just stop them, which is basically putting a block, putting a tackle. The last one you should look to do is deny. That's the last resort. The one that you really want to be, the situation you want to be in is just to slow them down. So let's shuffle this way. Let's shuffle that way. Let's just, let's just hold them off or just jockey them. Just, just jockey them or stand behind them. And dictate is kind of in between of last resort and the, the easiest one, which is to delay them. And the way mm. I explain to that is this. If you cut your finger and it's bleeding, you just put a plaster on it. Think of that as delay. If you break your arm, you're not going to die, but you need to go to hospital. You need to get it checked out, right? Mm. Think of that as dictate in terms of defending. If something serious happens to you, you need to go to A&E, get rushed to hospital. Okay, Think of that as deny, like last-ditch tackles, last-minute blocks. Spurs, emergency. emergency yeah, they actually call it emergency defending. Yeah. Spurs, I find, are quite often in an A and E mode. When we're called yeah. to defend, it's straight to what emergency. Was, what was we've, got put in, we've got to put in a serious block. We've got to put in a major tackle. We've, and, and this is why I feel sorry for Van der Ven. Why is he constantly being exposed to the most, I don't want to say serious, aggressive, the most extreme, the most extreme level of defending? Same why goes for Vicario. Same goes for Vicario. He's Same always having a but, but, but Van der Ven, Romero, the, our defenders, it's constantly like, right, you now need to defend, but it's proper hardcore yeah, but defending. Still, it's still. it's A&E defending. That's the problem at Spurs. And that, that is, on that, that's down to, to three things. Ange's tactics. Don't listen to any other YouTuber. None of them have worked in football, right? If they can't see that, then they shouldn't be talking football. Uh, and they can come and debate me. I don't. I didn't give a shit. I'll school them. Number two, sloppy passes from players that give away possession in 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 areas which invites that that pressure on. So that's down to um, quality of player. So now the recruitment team needs to be looked at. Now now the people in charge of overseeing who comes into the club need to be questioned. And the last one is the owner because any which way you look at it, guys, any which way you look at it. The team bus, as we left St. James's Park, the team bus was there. And I walked past the bus and some of the Spurs players that were going onto the bus were being booed by some fans. So I shouted out, leave me out in front of everyone. And one person shouted back at me, leave, he wasn't playing today. And I said, 24 years, same story, right? 
you have to call you have to talk about the chairman because he hires the people that pick the manager he hires the people that recruit the players these are his people and the one thing i've noticed about the people levy hires the paratichis the langes the mckenzies the um scott munns they're yes men they're suits where's the football people arsenal have got edu where's our football person if you want if you want someone serious in there to do a serious job get someone that's going to tell levy you do it my way not your way because i'm a football person and, and, and someone who's got a football brain, like a Teddy Shonen, for example. Teddy should be there, right? Instead, who... Like, sorry to swear, guys. Who the fuck is Scott Munn? Like, who... Actually, who is he? What's he ever done no, in football? It's not, other, it's than, not other than do marketing. Other than no, do business not, stuff. And he's in charge not. of hiring the team. Like, no, so for me... DJ, I'll wrap it up. So yeah. for me, you have to... You have to question Ange. You must. You must question players why they're at the club if they can't make a basic pass in front of them. And you have to question the owner because he has built this. This is his baby. So for me, there's a lot of layers of problems. So that's how I look at it at the moment. Van der Ven, I felt sorry for him yesterday. I genuinely felt sorry for the guy yesterday. But others might blame him. You know, who, everyone's allowed their opinion. So yeah, well, Matty Fells and, and Milai... Jedinik are the defensive coaches. Ryan Mason's yeah, uh, talking, talking coach, about so, this. so they're different. But the three main people that deal with the transfer are actually Ange, Johan Langer, and Rob McKenzie, the chief scout. They are the three. So uh, because Scott Munch just spoke, as you rightly said, he's just taken over the CEO duties. But but onto the game. I mean, if Ange is going to persist with his system, then changes have to be made in midfield. And by change, I mean there is a distinct lack of pace to help get the team out of trouble and to protect players like Van der Ven and the centre-backs. But Suma isn't quick enough and neither is Madison. Ben Okor is. He's the fastest midfielder, right? So when you're upfield and you've got to get back, right? It's an old saying, don't go unless you know you can get back, right? But it needs more pace than that midfield. You probably get away with one like Madison in there, but Basuma's too slow. And it just all went wrong. I mean, I looked at that team. I thought, oh, we can win this game. I did want to, did anyone, what did you guys think when you see the team? I knew we weren't going to win. I said it before I even went to Newcastle. Like, the problem is, Adrian, too many fans at our club have been sucked in again. Like, mm. I, I'm, listen, we have got one deluded fan base. And I blame the YouTubers and the podcasters as well because they are almost planting seeds in fans' heads. They're preaching things just because they want to always be positive and they always just want to be like, we love the club, we're a community. And they just want to come across as if, you know, that they know something that everyone else doesn't. We need some real talk about this club. We need some real conversation about what's going on mm -hmm. in Spurs. You know, the same people that went on Sky Sports, I won't mention names, but you're going to know who they are. The same people that went on Sky Sports and said, Timo Werner, good bit of, good bit of business, good signing, low risk. Those same people that we all get now, you know, your fan said this, that's that's what I get. That's the stick I get beaten up with by, by rival fans. Those same fans on their channels are now saying, yeah, we shouldn't sign Timo Werner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, you know, I don't want Timo Werner. It's like, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You've just told the entire fan base this is good business. And they're going around retweeting and sharing what you've said. They're all buying into what you're saying. But do, do you guys believe what any manager at Spurs says half the time? Like, uh, you, no, 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 they're like politicians. Aren't they? What they say in public and what they say in private amongst their coaches. No, no, is, no two, and two different things. I mean, you can't. When any, when any, when do you get a manager come on and say his team played badly? When you watch the game, it might not be Spurs and the game's been awful. They always defend their players. They always say, I mean. Because they're being asked an awkward question. What are they going to do? Turn around and castigate their players? They're not going to do it. Conti had a rant, but that's rare, isn't it? I mean, so, no. I mean, you, you've got to read between the lines with his press conference. Most of them are a waste of time. A complete, oh, the other team are great. Yeah, the other team have got world-class players. Yeah. And they praise them all up because they don't want to wind them up. Things like that. The manager we've got is no different to any of the others. With, with what I've seen now, what he goes out and says... 
Like, no player comes into this club without me wanting him. So, right, that's on his head as well. I'm going to win leagues. I'm going to do this. I'm going to play my way. No way he's going to change. He's just another puppet. That's all he is. The difference is Conte says it rough and ragged. Ange says it friendly. Conte plays defensive counter-attacking football. So people were definitely not liking it because it was some terrible football to watch, but look at the bloody team he had. Ange plays attacking football. So everyone, a majority, just love it off and he can go do as he wants as long as we kick the ball forward instead of backwards. He's just another puppet and it is starting to show now. Where are we going to go with another man who's accepted? Go on. No, no, no. Dan, you know, I agree with you. I, I said a couple of weeks ago, I think, I, I said, I think he might be a yes man. We're going to find out this summer, but you you, you, you kind of sound like you. What do you mean you think it's obvious? No, it's not obvious. I was about to say, I, I kind no, of agree. I can't lie. No, it is obvious. Well, let, don't say that you one think. Minute, one minute, one minute. Well, not, but I do think, I, I don't, I don't, I don't 100% believe he is a yes no, man just yet. On, no, no, it is based on facts. He just said we but, had a good transfer. He just, what's it called? Every time he just uh, praises Timo Wiener, he is a no, oh, no, no. Well, we don't buy, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. And we don't buy, we don't buy seventy million players. We buy five of them. That's a yes man answer. Yeah, but don't I also said no, but I also said I don't believe what managers say. Right, the only manager I hundred percent believe what he said. The only one was Conte. He's yeah, but the only Conte... that came no, to this Conte... club and he laid it down fast. Yeah. Which is why, but even I'm answering your okay, question. Sorry, 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 right? sorry, sorry. That's okay. It's okay. For me, Ange, I don't believe what he says, and I don't believe what any manager says. Conte is only one. So, for me to judge him, I won't judge him by what he says. I'll judge him by what he does. So this summer, like Adrian has always said, he's had a whole year to assess the players. He's had a whole year. Easy, Alex. He's had a whole year to now look at what they can and can't do in his system. This summer. Depending on what happens in that window, I will know for sure if he's a yes man. That's what I'm going to know. That's what I'm saying. I think he is. So far, Dietrich, from what I'm seeing, I think he probably is a yes man. But this summer, okay, can... for sure, I will know. Because if we sign Timo, I mean, that, that's, okay, that's but last... a yes man for me. Okay, if, but if, last if, summer... If, 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 you're going. So, do you think summer... he's going to sign Sorry? Yeah, he's going to sign Werner. Last summer, I think I think you will too. I can't lie. Yeah. Yeah. Last I think, summer, I think yeah, I do. last summer, who do we buy? Freaking Valise, Ashley Phillips. Yeah, and, but, but uh, hold on, hold on, no, no, wait, wait. Last summer, one minute, hold on. But listen, this is where we've got to be a little bit. See, now we're being unfair to Ange. Now, now we're treating Ange the way we mistreated all the other previous managers, right? We're falling into that trap now. There's a balance here. Ange came into Spurs. There's no way he came in and said, right, here's my long list. Go get me all them players. We've got six weeks to do it and the club was going to do it. He lost Harry Kane a few days before the kickoff to the season, right? We've got to give the guy a bit of slack, okay? He's not a shit manager. He's not crap. We're fourth for a reason, fifth for a reason. There's a reason we are there. He knows Mm. how to manage. He's got a pedigree, but it's whether or not he's going to be a yes man. Because if he's a yes man, he's finished at this club because we've seen what happens. It's whether or not he, behind the scenes, puts his foot down with the board his way and whether he gets what he wants to do, to, to, to show us what he can do with his tools or whether, okay. like Dan's saying, he is a yes man and he accepts Timo Werner. He accepts Villiers okay. because I... if he does, we're finished and he's finished and we know how this ends. That's how I look okay, at it. Okay, can we just look at the comparison, just two? When Conte came... Um, do you know the winter transfer when you got Dan Juma and the, I forgot who was the other, and Paul, yeah. yeah. Do you remember how he lost his mind after the end of the window? And why did? Yeah, but that was in his second to... season. That was in his second yeah. season, Dietrich. That was in the first. No, but season. he did. Yeah, but he didn't even finish a year at Tottenham. He didn't finish yeah, but, a year. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Give Ange the first season, and then the second season. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. That happened in the mm-hmm. second season. That's okay, but why? But I want to bring I mean, Dietrich, Dietrich. I want to bring Robbie in. I want to bring Robbie in because otherwise it's just going to be a Q and A between you and me, Robbie. <laughs> I just got to think there's, there's a few people on the show. Okay, um, can you Robbie. bring on the entitled that town FC because like he's been calling me out? Can you? Bring One second. Him? Let me. I'll, I'll do it in a minute. Just uh, yeah. put in the private chat the time of it, and I'll and I'll start it and I'll bring it on. Yeah. Robbie, for you, right? 
you know, I always like to get younger fans' opinions as well because us oldies, you know, I mean, we've we've had enough. You know, we've fallen apart. Yeah, hopefully, you got a good few years ahead of you of good times at Spurs, right? What, Don't what lie. Do you listen. I, I coach young people, right? You got to keep their positivity up. <laughs> Don't give me false just... hopes, though. I support so. Yeah, but Robbie, just because I'm gone doesn't mean I want you to be gone, right? <laughs> um, but what, what, when you look at Ange, what do you what, what what vibe do you get? Like, what what kind of person do you see? Do you see someone that's going to bring about change? Do you think he's going to influence the board? Do you think he's a yes man? Do you think he's another puppet? What what kind of vibes? And, what, and explain as well why you think the way you think. I mean, look, I think he's done a good job since he's come to Spurs compared to where we were last season. Not just in the table, but points that we've got and the position that we're in. But I do think he's got a lot of things wrong this season. I think sometimes he needs to tweak his system. I'm not sure about completely changing it because a lot of top managers, Guardiola, Arteta, Klopp, they stuck with their system. The ownership brought in the players to suit that system and now wherever you set up against them, it doesn't matter. They're going to break it down. They're going to find a way. And I think hopefully Andrew Postecoglou will be back. That's one of the reasons why I think he may not be successful at this club. But I think we'll see this summer where a yes man or not and for me I, I was talking to you about Estelle a few weeks ago when I was on your show and we were talking about the different players um, tweet from a few sources and I said I'm okay with us going in for a few different players the likes of Van de Ven those sort of players we don't know a lot about quite young highly rated board. as long as we make a few statements on it so what I mean by that is someone who's proven who can come in who's guaranteed to do a job for us like what Arsenal did with Declan Rice he's at one of them from Newcastle we're not sure we'll get him because of the ownership but he's a statement sign in my opinion Paulinho from Fulham if we don't get those and we just get these sort of different players I feel like the same cycle is repeating itself I feel like we're not going to do much better next season and I feel like the manager again could be sacked and it's just the same cycle repeating itself time and time again but this season I think I've seen a lot of positive things from Ange, but I do think at times he needs to tweak his system and the timing of the substitutions and game management needs to be better. But I think we'll see if he's a yes man or not in the summer, judging by the business that we do. When he's already stood there and blatantly said, I'm going to accept quality, not quantity, he's a yes man. And he blatantly said it. We showed it on the show the other week. I read yeah, it out sure. and still read it out as well. He blatant, he didn't use those exact words, but if anyone wants to translate anything and read out what he said there, he blatantly said, we go for quantity, not quality at Spurs. And he was happy with it. He is a yes man. He is another puppet. That is what he has proved to me. I mean, we have holes in the squad. Yeah. Um, I think we could do with another eight players, but I think the most important signing for us to bring in, the first signing has to be a number nine that can score goals. Has How to can we do that when we're going to go for quantity? Well, be because we will go we will go for a striker. And it may well yeah, be but... him and is it Feyenoord. I'd like Vlahovic at Juventus, but there is, you've got to try and pick these out and hope they're going to hit it off. I mean, him and is he's in the Dutch league again. We'll be up and have a Jensen. I mean, his, his goals have dried up a little bit recently, I think. But uh, that's why I'd rather go for Vlahovic because I think he's just a, he's a good... No, he would not work. No, no, he's not. He's nothing special in Italy. He really isn't. Since he's gone Juventus, he's fallen to pieces compared to what he was at Fiorentina. No, and I don't. No, and plus, his wages would be over four hundred and fifty grand. He no, plays a different system. Let's be fair. Yeah, he's not he is a different system. He's, system. he's, so he's not fair. Premiership. Personal opinion. Well, we're going to have to find a striker from somewhere because we've missed so many big chances this season, and we'd probably be well, Adrian, third probably if, if it wasn't. Adrian, we just. Well, well, I want uh, Isaac at Newcastle. Ange I said it and months just, ago. And just said he doesn't want to spend fifty million on a on a player. So of course we're not going to buy a quality striker. Isaac won't leave Newcastle. Neither will Anthony Gordon. I've only just gone there. No, yeah, hold on. We're, 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 trying trying to, we're trying to be legit. We're trying to be big dogs, so we can't be mm. selling to rivals. Yeah. That's and they will be, and they will it. be on You've big been. wages there because they've got the owners to pay that sort of money. Even though they've got to watch the FFP. And they might have to sell a player. It won't be one of those two. Got a super chat from my user. He says Van der Ven was busy cleaning up others' mess. Give him a break. I agree. Mm -hmm. He says yeah. we are in A and E mode without a stretcher. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Look, let, let's put. 
Oh, I, just to, I just want to put a little bit of perspective on this as well, right? Newcastle are no mugs, okay? Everyone ripped them off because they kind of had this mid-season collapse. But they've been in Europe. They've had a lot of injuries. I remember saying when we beat them 4-1 on our ground, they were depleted, man. They had nothing mm. to come off the bench. They looked like a broken club. And people said to me, oh, but Spurs have had injuries. And I said, yeah, but in that game, their injuries were worse than ours. Don't look at that 4-1 as a normal game. We caught them at a good time. But okay, that's football. you got to rate Newcastle. They came back from 3-1 down against West Ham. West Ham, who we couldn't beat. Twice we couldn't beat West Ham this year. They're 3-1 down against West Ham. They've got players being pulled off the pitch with injury, hamstring, knee problem. That You're thinking Newcastle are broken. And they came back to win 4-3. We went into this game saying, do you know what? Newcastle were depleted. You know, a lot of fans said we got them. I wasn't convinced, but I, I, I agree. Newcastle were depleted. Guys, yeah. they pumped us, man. A depleted... Can, can we put a little bit of respect on Eddie Howe's name here? Steve, I know no, I've not. watched your channels. You've been digging him out. The football. A lot of people on your channel. Do you, do you kind of a bit regret that you maybe gave him too much shit? No, no. It's not a regret thing. It's more of a... I Were you too harsh then? Were you too harsh? Possibly. Possibly, but at the same time, to yeah, that, that game showed that we don't need our A star, A11, you know, you know, first or sorry, starting eleven to beat you guys for nothing. All I asked was just, can I see some tweaks? Same thing with Ange. Because Eddie Howe kind of has not as extreme as Ange possibly, but there is one way to play Eddie Howe ball. But what we did was we were comfortable without the ball. We were comfortable without the football. We were just like, okay. Let's work without the football. That's that's fine because we can go man for man. We can physically beat these guys. Tactically, we we like I said in the in the beginning, that was one of our best tactical performances of the season from Eddie Howe. Um, find a way with the injuries. We still have quality up front. Play to your strengths. Try to minimize your weaknesses. So yeah, I've been, I've been critical of Eddie Howe because I think he can do better. You know, even despite the injuries, like against Luton Town, four four in Bournemouth, and et cetera, et cetera. So, but yeah, he he, the fact that we're sixth place and that we're ten points off of you guys. If you told me that two months ago, I would have been like, "You're crazy." We're t- we were we were like tenth, ninth, eighth at that point, and you guys were, I think, 15, 16, 17 points ahead of us. Now it's ten, and you guys have four games coming up, where you're probably not. You know, don't have a good record at Chelsea. You don't have a good – you have a good record against Man City, but Man City are in win-all-the-games mode. You know, you have Arsenal at your ground. You have Liverpool away. You do have Burnley and Sheffield United. I expect you to beat those two teams, but I don't – I, I just find it crazy that we're within 10 points of you. Yeah, you but have, Steve, yeah. Steve, that 10 points – I mean, I always do the maths, and like, I did a post on this actually – because yeah. I'm not bothered about Champions League football. I'd prefer us to be in the UEFA Cup, to be honest. That would make a good poll still, actually. Ask the members, ask those in the chat whether they prefer EC, ECL football over Europa League. Because you've got, if you win your six games, or or uh, uh, who's on the same 50 points for you, Manu, is it? Yeah, uh, we're up yeah, by Manu. I don't so know. If both your teams win your six games, you would have 68 points, right? Yeah. We've got yeah, 60. Yeah. We've got 60. Now, the point is, it's unlikely that you're not going to lose one of those games, whereupon you'll have, you'll, have, you'll have 65 points. Say you won five. You'd have 65 points, so would Man United. I don't even know if you've got to play Man United. I don't know if you've got to play it. No, we do. We do. We play them. Oh, away. right. That's even better for Spurs then, right? So then if, if Spurs only beat Burnley and Sheffield United this season and you two lose a game each, that's good enough for Europa League for Spurs. We only yeah. need to win two games. And I don't see Newcastle. I mean, if they do, they do. It really would surprise me. Well, Man United, the way both times have played, teams have played this season, I don't see them winning the remaining six games. And we've only got to win two to get well, your league. We've only got because it doesn't look like you know. Uh, Adrian, you know, Man United and Newcastle will not catch Spurs, so that's not going to happen. Spurs aren't so just we're going to get Europa League. Is that too bad for us this season? I think I, I don't like playing Thursdays and Sundays. 
But I think we've got more chance in the Europa League of going far, possibly winning the competition. Say, We're never going to do that in the ECL. That's not going to happen. And it would be two on. fingers up to Levy as well, which probably please still. I don't, even, got you. I don't I, even think we'll win the Europa, Europa Cup. Can moment. I get my opinions quickly? I honestly yeah, want us to make the Europa. But look, just think about it this way. I want us to, to make the Champions League so the fan base won't find any excuses why we don't spend big this summer. If we make the UCL, then Levy has no excuses and the fan base will not find one excuse. No, but then he gets what he wants, Dietrich. He no, gets no, what I he know. wants. No, no, but wait, wait, wait. Let's say we make UCL and he doesn't and, spend and big And dude, this we're going to get battered in the Champions League. Man. No, no, Honestly, wait, no, 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 wait, wait. We get, we get battered. We make the Champions League. Let's say he doesn't spend that big like we did last time with uh, Rich Allison and uh, Longley. I swear to God, the fan base will not find one excuse to defend this guy. How messed they up is this? Find how, the how, how, they... how, how messed up is this? We, we are deciding on what competition we go in depending on what upsets the apple cart or gives people excuses. Do, do you exactly. Think... Yeah, I know. Fans want to get into Champions League because they want to be in the best competition. Fans want to get into Europa because it keeps them in Europe. At Spurs, I don't want this because Levy will be happy. I want this to stop him having an excuse. I want this because then it will prove this point. It's like, mm -hmm. club, honestly, if if people... Do you know what? The, the culture at Spurs is broken. Yeah, And, and do you know what? And, and, uh, is it, tweets like this, where was it? There's one here, this, this, this comment. Someone said... Um, look, stuff like this. Stell, come on, man. This is too much negativity. Ange needs time. What have we said that's negative? We've just literally, re we're just rewording what's happened on the weekend. What, what, have, what we we have done. Th th this kind of fan, Enigma 6, this is you, fans like you, I call the problem. And I don't care if you don't watch this channel again. It means nothing to me. Rather than telling me, what you think we've said is negative and telling me what the counter is and back it with some facts. You, you you say stuff like this. The reality is you accept failure. You accept mediocrity. I don't. I've stuck to my guns. I never once budged from Levy out. I haven't once changed. But it's been the whole like... setup and the recruitment though still, hasn't it? We've spent over 600 million, million pound plus on players since the stadium opened. And where has it got us? Where has it got us? Like, yeah, because I we mean, don't employ nothing decent. Well, well, the, Look, the, the, Look, there have been yeah, a lot fans, of fans this season, Adrian. And no, yeah, Adrian, Adrian, you've done this as well. You've said we're going in the right direction. I haven't once agreed with that. I don't think Spurs are going in the right direction. I think Spurs are doing something. Dan hit the nail on the head a couple of weeks ago when he said, whatever manager that came in, as long as he kicked the ball forwards, he was going to be a, a crowd pleaser. And everyone got bought into it. Because one or two of the... Oh, and, and as long as a couple of the signings are good... That's it. And, and and Daniel Levy's sitting there, you know, well, yeah, we, 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 we've got our Tottenham back. Everyone bought into it. But when you sit back and look at it, it's like, well, hold on. Are we actually that good? Do but we really have a good The footballing structure has been changed, doesn't it? It has been changed. And doesn't mean it's better. It doesn't mean no, it's better. It from, no, it didn't from, this mainly right. down, uh, out of quick, Adrian, quick question Dean for you, mate, before Dean, you go on it. Quick question before you go on one, yeah? Conte... Ange, the reason I relate to Conte is because he was our last manager and they play opposite styles of football, yeah? Mm -hmm. We go to the Champions League. Uh, say we've got uh, an irrelevant, just random manager there, yeah? Take them two out of it, yeah? Right. We go and play Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Dortmund, Porto, PSG, Juventus, Inter, the list goes on. Where are we going to get somewhere? With Ange's tactics or Conte's tactics? Well, Conte's tactics, I wouldn't have renewed my season ticket if Conte had stayed. I didn't ask about your season ticket. No. I asked Conte you where is... would we get in the Champions League. If Conte League, had these defenders, if Conte oh, had these defenders, I got, let, let, the let's answer, let me Best finish. Best attacking teams in the league. Mark my words. Okay. If, these if, we, if we'd have had Conte's tactics this season, <laughs> we wouldn't have scored the goals we've scored. That is Rubbish. not the question Rubbish. I asked you, Adrian. Adrian, 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 well, no, hold on. Were you unhappy when Conte first came to Spurs? Were you unhappy with the first six months of Conte? I didn't want him. I didn't want no, him. You know, were, you were you unhappy? Were you unhappy with the football? I no, Adrian, him no, 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 Adrian, don't, no, don't change the subject. Were you know. unhappy with the first six months of Conte? If you say yes, I know you're lying, Adrian. No, no, let him answer. Let him answer. Yes. 
No, he's allowed to say yes or no, whatever he wants. Well, oh, you're not happy with that. You know, if I watch if I watch the team play and a win, I'm going I'm and we're getting results, I'm gonna be happy. That doesn't mean to say I still have to like the manager, like you guys are going on about Andrew. No, no, no. So, 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 so well. if we were winning, if we were winning, if we're winning, and like you said, that makes you happy. And we were winning because we went from twelfth to fourth. I hated the football. Games. I hated the football. You hated the counter-attacking 4-0 win at Aston Villa. You hated us smashing so, Arsenal. Yeah, I, ha I hate that style of football, counter-attacking okay. football. Okay. Okay, we then take the penalty kick for the knowledge. We beat them 5 0 last game of the season. Did I know, you know I know. That? Right, right, so my let point me ask is this. Question again. If he was back that summer, imagine what he could have done next. Instead, he got Fraser Forrester, Clement Longap, Dan Juma, Jed Spence. It was a scam what we did to him. No wonder he checked out. And all the fans, all the fans turned against him. Listen, I'm not Conte's biggest fan. I couldn't give a shit about that Conte. It means nothing to me. I, Poch was my favorite manager. Poch ball for me was the best I've ever seen Spurs ever. But the mm. point is, we had an elite proven winner whose football wasn't turgid. It became dog shit because we gave him dog shit players. If he had these defenders, I think we might be in a different place. And I think Harry Kane would have stayed. Still, well, you get Chelsea fans I've been saying this for how long? And Adrian, I asked you a question that you did not answer and you diverted yeah. it three yeah. times. Right. Irrelevant manager, just there. Just random manager, whoever you want. Put Mickey Mouse up there for all I care, yeah? Right. We're going Champions League with this team. Where do we actually get in the Champions League when we play against one of the big clubs? Not going to go through them again. What style would you play? Would you play Angie's style? Will that work in the Champions League? Or will Conte style work in the Champions League? What one do you think will work better? One or the other? I don't know what style will work better. Oh, then you haven't God. watched much Champions League. Oh, no, 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 let me finish, people. Oh, no. Then because you haven't watched much playing, Champions League, no, no, have you? Playing, playing, playing an attacking style of football, a lot of teams expect you to be cautious when you're playing and all that that can throw some teams Mate, off. there's attacking style work. of football and then there's sticking your defense on the halfway line what style would work best in the champions league and get you somewhere an attacking style of football if you want to win a game, well if you want to go like that lie. i have never ever seen lie. someone in the champions league win with angie style of having their players on the halfway line whereas i can name about 10 different team eight different teams that have won through playing conte style yeah, even can I ask a question here? Because there's something there's something that doesn't made up it doesn't something doesn't make sense in my in my head right now. And in the comments, I'm seeing these comments. I don't I don't understand. We don't play attacking football. Did you, what, did you see attacking football against Newcastle? No. I guess no, I saw right. people no. all over the place. It's a myth. We we have we have a 20 minute patch where the other teams either tied or they drop back a bit and we go at them. And then that's know, it. Still, still, still for them attacking so, footballs having possession. Football? For uh -huh. them for them attacking footballs having 70% possession. That's for them in their head. They think that's uh, attacking football. They still, have nothing not, to do with, with it. Still, not once in that game did I fear your attack. At at, at no point, I don't know if that's how you guys felt. Like, oh wow, we're looking really good here, Spurs. Oh, you know, at, but every time we went on the attack, I was like. We could get something. We could get you something. Guys play, get you guys play more attacking football than us. I get. With 27% possession. Yeah. With 27% possession. doesn't mean you necessarily play the style of football. We didn't, right. we didn't attack really yesterday. Like you say, Steve, we didn't look dangerous at any point, really. We play. Yeah. We legit play midfield football. Can we keep the ball in the midfield and defence? Yeah, we yeah, tried yeah. To That's it. It. That is the point, you see. I mean, maybe I'm spot. I've been brought up on Nicholson, Birkenshaw, Yo, Redneck, Poch. You know, I mean, so it's. I like to see a team try and attack, not deliberately set up with a low block. We attacked, not under, Conte. We attacked under Conte when he first. Did. See, I don't think people understand my point. We did. When Conte came, we attacked, man. We attacked. We did it in a different way. He got way. us up to fourth place. Right. We, and we, we, we beat we did, Arsenal. We didn't Conte didn't sit back and defend for 90 minutes. He What he did was, he rather than being high line, he was much deeper. You come when we when we when we do win it, bang! We're going to hit you with a quick attack, and he did it time and time and time again. The problem was the second season, the signings were so underwhelming. Crap. He became ultra defensive, right? And that's and that's where fans turned. But had we bought mm -hmm. him the plays he wanted, have any of you by chance, just out of curiosity, uh, Robbie, Steve? I bet you two probably have. Did you ever see Inter Milan under Conte the football they played? 
Yes. I watched it too many a time. I watched it all day. They were very good. Adrian, I swear to God, the football they played was so, so good, man. Like, it was genuinely yeah. good stuff. It wasn't counter-attack. That, it was, the, the that was the first the time Perisic played as a wing-back. Yeah. yeah I, 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 think I'm it's following the Milan. Sorry, Dan. I follow enters my second two. Let me hear Robbie. Robbie, 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 I think it's I think it's a bit of a myth though that oh it was all crap under Antonio Conte. Because the reason I think he set up like he did last season was because if he attacked with those players, if he played anything like what Andrew's done this season, it would have been a lot worse than it already was. And I think in the first season under Conte, you were battering teams at times. Even on the squad that he had weren't brilliant. You said it yourself still. Three nil against Arsenal, five nil against Nod. That we battered Everton, battered Villa, we destroyed teams. Newcastle five one at home. You know we were yeah. we were really destroying teams. And the reason yeah, we battered Newcastle five one at home. Season, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the reason our foot wasn't as good the next season was because he wasn't giving the players to allow it to be. I think Andrew's intention is right. He's he was never going to be given the players, though, was he? The high line. He was a stopgap. He was a last ditch, last ditch brought in manager because Levy was yeah. desperate. And even Adrian. when he won the league title with Chelsea, there were Chelsea fans complaining about the style of football. Yeah, but they they're, spoiled. The they're spoiled. They're spoiled. They're spoiled that lot. They're spoiled. Listen, if 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 Conte wasn't going to give him the players, how the hell is Andrew going to be giving them? It's not. It's no, not. There should there should be money there, shouldn't there? I mean, well, if you but, just, but, it's never okay for me. It's without. And that's about bringing in at least 100 million from player sales. Right? Yeah, but he's, yeah, but he said the money's going to be spent on three or four players instead of one or two. No, he's so like, he's like quantity over quality. I've seen this, this in some podcasts. I've seen, oh, we're not in for 100 million pound players. Fine. Right. I haven't got a problem with that. Yeah, but we're not in for 60, we're not in for 70 or 80 million pound players either. Oh, I think we'd get a striker in for 60. No, do you, you know what the problem is? 60. We've, yeah, but we've already done that with Richardson. I'm saying that the, the, the real quality is in that slightly high. Look. Can I ask you a question, guys? Can I ask you a question? Oh, a serious question now. A serious question. Has Arsenal spending £100 million on Declan Rice upset the upper club? The Spurs? The Spurs fans? Yes. Has that, has that big, bold move we've never seen them do before? We've seen them do £70 mm -hmm. million on Pepe, who was a disaster, £50 million on Bamiyang, £50 million on this guy. We've seen that before, right? But when they dropped 100 million on Declan Rice and it did galvanise them this season, whether it gets trophies or not, who knows? Hopefully not. But did oh, Arsenal wow. making that move really kind of shake up the Spurs fan base in terms of what we do in the transfer window? Of course, they make that statement. Everything that they do. Yes. They make that statement signing that we haven't over the last few years. I mean, like manager after manager, each manager's had their flaws in the last few years. Pochettino, Conte, Nuno, Jose, even Ange Postecoglou. But my issue has been every single manager has been back to a point and then not been given that statement signing. Potter was never given yeah. Die Bar. Um, Jose wasn't ever given the top centre back he wanted. Conte was never given Bastoni, but we really could have never got that 70 to 80 million pound player who's going to properly make a difference and elevate us into title contention or actually competing with the big boys. What Arsenal have done is they've bought in that statement signing in Declan Wright. They, they've spent the big money. And it's no coincidence that they're contending for league titles. Now, I'll see this summer. I don't think that we will. But as I say, I think Anne should be backed with that 70 he, to 80 million signing. Like he will get happen. backed. I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to I'm going to predict the future here, yeah? So anyone can hold me on it when it comes to it. Angie's going to get backed 100%. I'll tell you why he gets backed 100%. Because I... Because he's such a small-time little manager who's never been in a big club in his entire life, he doesn't know what it's like to have 200, 300 million sitting in the bank. He doesn't know what it's like to go for an 80, 90 million player. The most I think he's ever probably paid for a player is about six or eight million. Yeah. So when Conte sits down, uh, sorry, Conte, when Levy sits down and says, there you go, Ange, you've got 100 million to spend. The only He's going to take that up and think, wow, 100 million? Never seen that money in my life at a club because he's never been in a big job. He's never been at a big club. He's never been in a big league until now. One advantage we do have with Ange is he is known for doing it the Brighton way, finding out the cheaper players that can come good. But now we're going back to the quantity over quality side and taking the hopes and chances. If we want to do something and we really want to do something, instead of going for five players 
Kuba. that can build our squad a little bit. We need to go bang, bang, bang. Three quality players or very, very good players who can walk into that team who's better than not on there and actually do something. So we will get backed. But it'll be with a lack of money to everybody else. But to him, his eyes are going to light up and it's going to look like a hell of a lot of money because the man has never seen a big job in his life. Celtic fine. is not a big job. Right, fine, Dan, fine. My issue is statement signings and I post lots of videos of players we, we're supposedly interested in my group to let the fans go and have a look at them rather than comment on a player they've never watched. I watch a lot of these. All the ones I've watched, there's not a £100 million player in there because they're coming from different leagues anyway. I don't know if they're good. It's not like you've got a Messi and a Ronaldo out there now and players like that that are worth a fortune. Where are these £100 million players? Name them. Name these statement signings. They don't Name have to be £100 million. Million. They could be 70, 80. No one's getting £100 million. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think the first one next will probably go to about £70 million for a player. Isak, uh, Isak, Isak at Newcastle. Adrian, Isak at Newcastle. Well, you could How say Eze as well. Yeah, Eze. Kimmy, just buy a Munich. Adrian, you've just answered your own question. Nicola Barella. Hundred percent. So many Steve. players you can buy for hundred. And then it's and it's and also a question then. Then it's availability. If these players are with clubs that have got Champions League football, they're not going to come to Spurs, are they? Yeah, but we've said we're not even going to try. We've said we're okay. not yeah. going to try. We've, he has blatantly said we are going to go for quantity right. and not quality. So I'll read this thing out again and see what everybody thinks on here. Right, give me a minute, Scale. Carry it on. I'll bring it up and I'll read it out to everyone, and we'll see how everyone on here translates. Right. Let me. Let said. me. Uh, whilst you whilst you find those comments, let me let Alex and Kuva who have joined yep. us have their say, um, and then we can come back to it. Um, look, Alex, we haven't spoken about the game yet. We've just kind of gone into it about this how this is outburst yesterday. Who's outburst? Alex on uh, Tottenham TV. Yeah, that was good stuff. Man. That was good stuff. Um, yeah, Alex. <laughs> Alex. Um, yeah, no, Alex, are you are you are you thinking any different to how you felt yesterday? Because obviously, after the game, we are more emotional, we are more reactionary. Have you kind of maybe looked at it from a different perspective, or are you still in the same place as yesterday? Well, like I said on my channel, Mr. Box Office TV, I, 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 I <laughs> I've, I've not proven anything. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm actually That's glad it. to see what Dan has said right now because it's just proven my point. You know what I mean? The culture of this club and the culture of the fan base is just an absolute mess at the moment because, because of the way that we've been treating the club about how many years now. So, like, today wasn't going to change anything. Yesterday didn't change anything for me at all. I'm, I'm done this season. I'm looking forward to next season now because even he says it, even though I don't even like the guy, Josh me on my second season. And again, mm -hmm. like, I understand people saying that, oh, I don't like, understand the tactics and everything else. But again, I'll go back to what he said before in June. Again, I don't like the guy. And I was saying the same thing he's saying again. He said, if you don't want my football, do not hire me. So who's the mugs? I Who are hire. the mugs? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? And he's been consistent. And he said it in front of Daniel Levy as well. So people saying, and the thing is, though, this is... Right on cue. It's only taken this season. We were twerking for this guy after 10 games. After 10 games, they were saying we should twerk for this guy. The problem is, it's like we just don't we don't we just don't understand it. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm just saying right now, right? I'm just waiting for the time because Dan's just said it right now. If six months, give it six months. Yeah? Okay, if the fan base goes mad, right? Then we'll see what happens. And this is exactly why I had to stance what I had already. I'm not even angry. It's just the way I speak. Barnaby was absolutely taking a piss yesterday, saying what he's saying, because he got rattled yesterday. Yeah? I gave him a spit to come on top of my way, but he was taking a piss yesterday. Yeah? Because Sim saw exactly what I was talking about. He knows exactly how Mr. Box Office goes every single time. You know what I mean? Yeah? That's the thing. It's like, I've told you. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Because if you can't see what I've been saying the last how many months, and Dan's just proven it to me right now, I'm hearing other fans saying it as well, and people who do not come on streams are saying the same thing that Dan's saying. Yeah? 
That's all they need to say in that sit, yeah? What I will say about the game yesterday, right? Like I said, I stick by what I say. I am fed up of people telling me, get out my... Don't support Tottenham Hotspur because I don't back Song as a captain. I'm sorry. No. He's not a captain. He's not a captain. I'm sorry. As a great... He's a good, great player. I'm not disputing... He's not a great player. I'm not disputing it. But don't tell me I'm flip-flopping or being um, um, I'm going over the top because I've been consistent the whole bloody year. And if you don't know me, watch my bloody channel, Mr. Box Office TV, rather than woozle out of it and watch the last one on bloody Spurs. Yeah? Don't tell me that. Yeah? Sorry, Wubby, Rob. I don't want to uh, uh, swear in front of you, bro, because, uh, uh, you know, I, yeah, I yeah. should be respectful. The point is, yeah? You know what I mean? It's just like, I'm sorry, I'm not having it. Yeah? So don't have a go at me, yeah? Because I've been telling you all day, in, all day, every single day, yeah? And I've been consistent because even though I, I was angry with Adrian asking me that question when my breaking point was, I actually thank him for that question because my breaking point was before, after we got Mourinho in. And that's why I've been, I've been reacting like this. If you watch me since Chris Cowlin, yeah? Chris Cowlin, big up Chris, Chris Cowlin every single time, yeah? Right? You see me since Chris Cowlin, I've been the same. Every single time you see me on no, the no, football no, chairs, I'm saying every don't single time. Not on my channel. Not on my channel. Don't big him. No. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. 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 Still, but anyway, moving on. Anyway, but my point is, yeah, right? Is that I was, I was I've been consistent every single time. So can't have a guy at me about like that, and that's it. You can call me whatever you want, but I don't care. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. And that's all I need to say, and that's it. Courtesy of Mr. Box Office, the main event, the professional truth and entertainment, the ratings killer, <laughs> the nightmare, and everyone's guilty pleasure, and that's it. And if we don't know, get to know. Back to you still, I'm done. Ouch. <laughs> that's what I love about <laughs> Alex. Grenade in the room. Well said, mate. Sometimes right. he even answers the question. Question then, yeah? I would just like to know, how everyone translates what I'm going to read. I think not just stars for the future, but also solid players. I don't expect any superstars. We know. We know Tottenham's strategy is different from this. The strategy of Spurs is to sign two, three or four different players rather than just one superstar. This is the clear project of the club. How do people translate this? Not very ambition. Let, let Cooper go. I want Cooper to go first because he hasn't spoken yet. Um, well, for me, you could. For me, I'm going to look at it. Uh, we're looking to sign younger players and develop them into them kind of players that are needed. Um, because let's face it, I've I've seen the like many of us here who have staunchly Levy out. Um, we have seen a lack of sort of going the extra mile from the chairman. There's money gets spent, but it gets spent badly. It gets spread out on mediocrity all the time. I think um, last summer for me, it, it sort of goes back to what happened last season. I Something beautiful happened for me last season. The club broke me. I finally stopped giving a shit and did other things. And none of it mattered anymore. And I can bring into this season... I, uh, that I can bring in that beautiful bit where I can have an unbiased opinion about my club because it doesn't matter to me. I know we're going to lose games. I know we're going to win some games. It's all it's all fun when it works. It when it doesn't work, I'm not bothered um, because I'm now looking at a longer term build. I'm looking at what we can do in the next three four years. This season is never going to be a great season. What I expected is we're going to be behind the three we see at the top at the moment, and we're going to be in a pack chasing. And sure enough, that's where we are. So I don't look at it as a disaster. I don't look at the, the managers, the, either the Messiah or, you know, a complete failure either. I will say he's the Messiah because I find it funny. I like going with the uh, full in, we're going to win the quadruple each season, just because it makes me feel better. Um, but out it, of it's, what I just read to you, how do you take that, it? You... Out of, so out of that, I'm, I'm going with... Uh, we're not going to be signing superstars. That's out of the question. So we're, so we're going to go for quantity, not quality. Not necessarily. Well, it's you're looking at the, quant the the combination of both. Really, you're looking at players that are quality young players, 
that can then take the step further and develop into superstars at the club. We want to find our next bail. We want that that kind of so, player. So basically, we're not going to go for players that can do it now. We're going to go for players that can do it in three years. That's, time. that's the way I'm seeing it. Yeah. Okay. The way I see it is, the way I see it is, Levy's been burnt, isn't he? Davison Sanchez, Endon Belly, probably Richarlison as well, right? Then you got Lo Celso, right? That's two hundred million there, right? In wages and probably more in wages and that, and contracts and stuff like that. And I but just what's think what to do with the sorry, go on, mate. Sorry, no, no, because I think when when it comes to buying players in the future, like adopting this new data analyst stuff that Brighton have done. That is the way Spurs are going to go. Listen, mm. I wish we had them. I wish we would, would go out and buy like buy a, if they're good enough. I want to see them. We'll even when we're in for players, the fan base. Okay, to be able to, that's well, not the them. question that you've been asked. No, you the said quantity I over quality. I said I asked, we how look, do you translate what he says? Are we going to go we, for players we, that we can do look, it now, we, or is he just going to be a puppet and look, accept the quantity? We will look for quality done on data and done on the eye test when scouts are sent out to watch players. Probably in the fifty to seventy million range, but not higher than seventy mil. That's so you think, think we're going to get up? So you think we're going to get up to four players up to seventy mil a piece? I don't know how many we'll get in, in a window. I think we'll probably get four. We'll get four in a window, and I, I, I'm alarmed because I think we will sign Werner. I think he might be the fourth one. Oh, I'm, I'm Ange out then. I yeah, I know, I know. I mean, I don't want him still. I'm Levy out, Paratici out, Lange out. I've, I've, I'm Stelios I've out. I'm Spurs on, fans out. I've I'm out of Tottenham. On, in the 17 yeah, out, everything out. Yeah, everything. I've banged um, on about, you know, we need to fucking challenge Werner. for a league. We've got to score 82 goals. Ver, Werner's first one out. At least at least Johnson's got potential and shown signs of improvement recently. Signs, signs that there's more to him than just pace. So, no, I don't want Werner. But, I, you know, if we got Edison in from Atlanta, I'd like him. I wouldn't mind Tosin Adarabaya, who might be on a free. Uh, I haven't looked at Lloyd Kelly's video recently because he was injured before. I'm not sure, so you see him. Adrian, Adrian, we're, 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 I, don't, I don't get you. I don't understand you. I'm toasting. <laughs> I'm toasting. Lloyd Kelly, like, do you know what we're up against? Have you seen City and Arsenal? Do you, have you seen the Goliath? Adrian Goliath's watch... had a good season with Fulham. Fulham are doing Mine, well. I think. Mine's All right, not doing right. well. Okay. All right. Okay. There's, okay. I'll put you this way. Try and put, try and put some perspective on it. Poch got us to Champions League final, Champions League quarterfinals. He has mixing with those kind of teams. Revel, Revel, the facts are we were knocking around with them kind of teams. I watched the Champions League quarterfinals last week and I was blown away. Atleti, Dortmund, PSG, Barca, Arsenal, Bayern, Real Madrid, City. I watched those games and I thought, fucking wow. Mm. You think we're going to rock up with Lloyd Kelly, Tosin's, and at the Rubios, and we're gonna we're gonna play like that. Well, I'd rather right. I'd rather get him in Cappy, you know. But but, but, the you, point okay, is, but you never mentioned that name. <laughs> Your name just changed names. He's, he's on, well, even he got I've got loads on my loads of players listed on my book. That I'll, that I'll be quite happy with loads of them. No, but no, no, Adrian, you, but you as a fan, like you as a Spurs fan, why why would you accept Tosins and Lloyd Kelly? Why would you accept that? He's fast, six foot five, very obviously very good in the air. He's a good footballer. Not Go and watch the video of him. So why, is it, why is it for them? Why is it for Not them? For the because he came out of Man City's academy and they got him in the young. He wasn't division. good enough. That's why he left City's academy because he wasn't good enough. Well, we can't say well, he wasn't he, good enough because Cole probably, Palmer is tearing. I don't know if he was. No, but he's no. No, but the difference. Yeah, but no, but at least Palmer. Progress because least they're not short sure of quality defenders at Man City, are they? Let's be fair. No, but at least you saw Palmer. That's why uh, in the Super Cup. That's why final, Sancho went qualities. as well, you know, because he couldn't get in the team. Mind you, I think he's not that old. Anyway. Also, never played one game with City. At least Palmer played. I, I, think we too much, I think we're spending too much time talking about defenders. Mm. I think the real problem with this team is the front line and the midfield come to, come to yeah, that. It's close. It's close. Like, when when we attack, we can we go on this high risk, high reward system. Um, we're not getting the rewards, so all we see is the can high we? risk. So that's why we're getting hammered in some games. It's because the ball, the ball comes back so easily. We don't get shots away. The, the idea with this getting in the other opponent, the opponent's half and creating chances is so you're either scoring a goal or maybe it goes wide, it goes over the bar, and, and it's a goal kick. You don't get instantly countered either way. At the moment, 
We pass it around sideways all the time. Players are scared, scared to take a chance. Really slow. Some, slow. Some of them, some of, yeah, slow. It's painful to watch. Some of them are too scared to take that little bit of a chance because they know they'll get criticised if, if they lose the ball. Now, nothing has impacted this team in the last few years negatively more than Harry Kane leaving because we were so utterly dependent on him. Now, the yeah. argument we were talking about, what would Conte do with this team? It'll be so much better with the defence. Also got to re realise how much Conte depended on Harry Kane. How would Conte have done last season if he didn't have him? It wouldn't have been the same. We would have had to commit more players forward to try and score a goal because there, there just wouldn't have been... We haven't mm. lost. We haven't, uh, we haven't found a way to replace him. You can't replace him. So we've got this season, this... This whole uh, idea is we've got to find a way to develop as a club to play without that player. It's 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 hurting us badly, and I can't expect any manager on earth to come in and make us great in one season. So it comes down to a question. I think it just comes down to a question of now: what flavour of manager do you want? Because at the end of the day, we are going to need to rebuild. It's going to take time, and you've got to be patient. I don't think consistency's been a problem. How many goals did we score last season? How many have we scored now? That's a serious question. I don't the same. actually know. I'll look it up. I'll look it it's up. It's the same. And we've so got the same. Games to go. So we're not miss so we're not missing Harry Kane that much then, are we? Uh, depends he's how got you look 70, at it. He's got 70 goals last season. If you oh, look at it, the reason the only really? reason we're compensating for Harry Kane's loss is because we're pushing so many people forward. We have to go mm. ultra attacking to make up for the goals we're missing. But we're still scoring the goals without Harry Kane. Yeah, it's sixty-five. Into the defense, we're we're not we're not a balanced team, are we? Uh, no, not at all. But that's mm. not my point. We are still scoring goals without Harry Kane, and the same amount of when he had Harry Kane. So if he played, if again it was him without Harry Kane, he could still score this amount of goals. We haven't got Harry Kane, and we're scoring the same amount of goals. But I'd love Harry played... Kane back. I messed up saying get rid of Kane. I I messed up. I wish we. I had don't him think back. you messed. No, no, no we're no. not messed up. But, but, but... But yeah, Conte likes to play a counter-attacking game. Fair to say? Yeah. Mm. What was and the key back? Because it wasn't just Kane's goals. He was also the creator as well. He was the one that yeah. dropped people. Mm -hmm. play the but now we've got Madison and Son could be in front of him and Kulazewski could be a very good target man like he was with Ronaldo. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, I, I don't... Guys, 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 hold on. I think yeah. I get Cooper's argument here. Right? I, Cooper, correct me if I'm wrong. What Cooper's saying is, all right, yeah, okay, we've scored the same amount of goals. But surely with Kane, we score a hell of a lot more goals, which yeah. should lead to more wins. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that. Plus, he can create more because right now we create our creativity is like in the mud. It's, it's literally rudderless. Well, I, I think I think we, we would have done we've been higher in the league because I think we even mm. under Conte last year, even though I didn't like him, I, um he he was actually the, the X factor that was getting us through games. You know what I mean? Like we were, yeah. we were like fourth before like Conte had his outbursts. Burst. You know what I mean? And that was not I, I, I didn't like our team. Everyone knows how I felt our team about our team. You know what I mean? I was I was tuned out, like I said before. But like like with it's I don't think um it's it's a big you know, I think I think the thing is though, I think it's the whole um atmosphere sort of thing. I think the whole thing with last year was the atmosphere and the the the, the, the fan base was divided and like the whole contract with Conte and everything else, I think that's what the whole thing was. This year, I think it's just the manager has got a personality, and like like Dan says, we just hit the ball forward and that's it, and that's that's all we've done, and that's it for me, you know. But again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having to go at it. It's just that for me at the moment, I'm just very skeptical. I'm just, I'm just not there at the moment. You know what I mean? That's that's just yeah. being being general, and that's it for me. You know, it, it was always going to be a long term thing. Yeah, and mm. I think Kuva's right in saying that we need to give patience, uh, uh, patience. But unfortunately, I think where I I, I differ with um, Kuva respectfully is that I think unfortunately the patience is with the the board, and if the if they have the patience, that will um, go back onto the fans. That will that will relate with the fans. You know what I mean? But that's going to take time. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I think I've said this a, a couple of times now on a few streams. A lot of fans, Tottenham fans, want a time machine so it can just fast forward so they can prove that this is going to work. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, it's like um, 
and this is something I was going to speak on my my channel. It's like the Cody Rhodes story on in WWE right now. Yeah, <laughs> he, he he he. You know, he didn't win his last year. Last year, his, his championship last year. He wins the championship this year. You know what I mean? You know, he had to go through a, a few finish blocks to finish the story. You know what I mean? It's a bit cheesy, but it's, <laughs> it, 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 if you watch wrestling, you'll, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. You yeah, know what I mean? Alex, so it's you like, know what the difference it, here is, though? Do you know what the difference here is, okay? It, it, it is so multi-layered at Spurs. On the one hand, we've, we've been patient for 24 years, and now we've been told, be patient a bit more. And, and that in itself is a big ask. Mm. And whilst, you, whilst you're asking fans to be patient, you're saying, right, I need another 6% from you on the ticket prices. If you're disabled and you sit in the premium section, your carers now got to pay as well before they were free. The elderly fans were taking away your concession. Oh, I've just got myself a three million pound bonus, which is roughly the same as what I'm going to be taking from you from the increase in the, in the price of tickets. And I'm looking for new investors because there's a hotel I want to build. Can you just be patient? It's like David Brent going around telling everyone they're mm. going to lose their jobs and then going, in other news, I've been promoted. Well, it's a joke, isn't it? If you took what we saved on Kane's wages, what we saved on Kane's wages would have covered that increase, that 6% increase, and you could have even had concessions for under 18s out of the money you saved on Kane's wages. So Levy's got a lot to blame for this. This is this is this is why this is why like if if you want fans to give you something, there's got to be a buy-in. Like give me something to buy into when it's just like we're the richest club, but we're not going to spend big on superstars. We're the richest club, but I need more money from you. We're the richest club, but we're going to build a hotel. What am I buying into? Where's where where are you? Why why should I give you patience? And I think that's where it is, Alex. Yeah, Ange does need patience, but sadly for Ange, sadly for Ange, he's come to the worst possible club for patience. Yeah, because I, I think, I think he knows that, and it's, I think it's, he knows it's, that it's because. I think sorry to interrupt yeah, you, Steve. Uh, as yeah. to ask, well, Steve, it's good to have you on the stream, by the way. You, you, yeah. I, it, uh, we've missed you. We missed you, bro. Um, the, the point is, yeah, right. Um, is that you know? I, I think I think you're right. I think because we haven't won no trophies, and I think the difference is between us and Liverpool at the moment. Liverpool won trophies, right? So they've seen it, done it at the T-shirt. We've yeah. not done that. You know what I mean? And throughout that time frame. We've we've seen Leicester City do it. We've seen Swansea City win a trophy uh, as well. You know what I mean? We've seen lots of other stories. Yeah, and that eats into and, the patient. That and that eases into, into that patient sort of thing. And that's it. And yeah. I think at the moment, like I said, I think you need to let fans say what they want to say. Let them say it. What what we are doing at the moment, which is wrong, is what I've seen with lots of other fans, what we're seeing right now at the moment. I've seen other channels as well. Tottenham fans saying... Well, you've got to stop doing this. You've got to stop doing that. You've got to stop doing this. And that's making it even more worse. Again, if the board do what Arsenal did with Arteta, that will change the game. That will change the game for Tottenham fans. Do you know what I mean? Because then it will show that they believe in the process. Right? And, you know, at the moment, with Arsenal at the moment, they had a bit of a stumbling block with their championship. But... Because of what they did the last how many years, sticking with Arteta through that hard times when people were saying Arteta out and they stuck with Arteta, said, no, we're sticking with our man. That's when the, 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 the that's when the, the light bulb will happen with Tottenham fans, I think, as well. The only other thing that will happen is if we go on to have a great season next season, like lots of people say, like Paul the Hotspur Hippie says, like somebody else on Top One Tour says as well, right? The rock like, set in. The rock set in. adapted. He adapted his style of play. He changed his style of play. He even changed his style of play against Man City and played a total different way to how he usually plays. Because we all know up the Etihad, you can get a good spanking. He adapted. I don't see Ange doing it. And if we're struggling, we're struggling. What I saw at Celtic was he played the same way against Real Madrid in the group stage of the Champions League as he did in the Boston away. They played some good football against Real Madrid. Oh, yeah, they did. I watched the game. But they got spanked. And if Ange doesn't adapt, Ange's going nowhere. That's what I'm saying. He won't. Yeah, so that style of play, the Premiership is too good 
for Ange Postacoglu then. Guys, and, 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 and Steve, even and Steve, sorry, yeah. one second. Let me just, no, I, I will. I will bring you in. I just want to say, um, uh, Robbie's got to go. I just want to tell yeah, everyone: Bobby. if you get a chance, like, yeah, easy, subscribe, Mike. follow Lily White Lane TV, get follow Robbie's link channel. Comments, people, get his link. Get his link. Um, Robbie, yeah, please, wanna, please subscribe to Lily White TV, wanna, please. Lily White Lane TV, bro, please. Yeah. He's, he's an up and comer. He does really well. He supports all the channels as well. He supports Mr. Box Office as well. Actually, appreciate him as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to embarrass you, Robbie, but he actually called me and said, oh, I'm really sorry for being horrible to you. I said, what? what Only really? you can promote him and plug your really? channel. You're not being horrible, you're just saying your opinion, bro. Stick to your opinion, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, you know what I mean? So big up to Lee Lee White Lane, and that's it, bro. And I want to see some more subscribers to his channel, bro. He worked so hard for his channel, bro. You know what I mean? So I want to see some subscribers. I think there's about how many people in the in the in the, in the chat um still? How many people in the chat? We've got 430 people. 400 smash, of you. Come on now. Come on now. 100 of you can subscribe to this guy. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes yeah, so you, need, you need a little everyone. bit of a lift up. I mean, and that's it. You know what I mean? This is this and is Mr. Box Office. You give a little bit of a rub to somebody that supports Mr. Box Office, yeah? <laughs> the live right lane and that's hey. it. Back to you, back to you still, I'm done. Yeah, every, hey, the link, the subscribe. link, the link. I just put it in there to his channel. Make sure yeah. to subscribe, people. Put the link in there. Yeah, every, everyone subscribe to Robbie because uh, he's a good guy and he also is a fan of uh, – Box Office TV, where the membership over there is only £1.99 a week, and there's five shows a week on that channel as well. Uh, but back to but it's, it's about Robbie. Let's make it back. <laughs> Sounds like a BBC. How can I not be a supporter of Mr. Box Office? Like, but it's been a pleasure coming on still. Big up to everyone in the panel in the chat. Cheers for having me on. Steve, as well, I believe it's the first, and Adrian, I believe it's the first time I've been on the stream with both of you. So, pleasure to meet you and talk to you. Cheers for having me on. As yeah, always, come on, you Spurs, Ian, if you leave you out. Have a good one. Big up, Robbie. This way, though, that you're going on this process. I mean, Levy is to blame for all of this, right? I mean, oh, yeah. That's why I don't rate you guys. And we're still paying for it now because Poch wasn't back for 518 days in the transfer window. To compound that problem, we then had some panic buyers or crap buyers, and then we added added to the rot that was already in an, a squad which was ageing now, that was struggled to do the, do the high press. They did it all right for a few seasons, and I... Kane and Son were getting ankle injuries and all that stuff. And that was all then compounded. Then it was further compounded by the bullshit that come out from our chairman when he was coming out with things like, oh, the DNA of the club and all that. Well, anyone knows the DNA of the Spurs way of the club. I could go on about it, but I'm not going to right here, right, and give you the history, right? But, but, so then what's he do? He brings in free managers that don't suit the DNA of this club. Mourinho, the uh, Smurf. No, no. The Smurf, yeah, and then and then Conte. They were Smurf. never. Yeah. He looks like a Smurf, doesn't he, Nuno? Spirit of Santo? If you sat him on a toadstool and give him a fishing rod, he'd it, look it'd look it'd look cool, wouldn't he? Right? He would. A Smurf. Right. So <laughs> like a Smurf. <laughs> do you mean a gnome? And and so now Smurf we are sure to what we didn't do right. When Poch to me was wrongly sacked anyway because he wasn't backed, he lost all them away games, and the fan base started Smurf. trying to blame him instead of the chairman. Right? <laughs> and then, and then you, you're coming through here to now, and we're still trying to sort it out, and we're still trying to cut more of the right out from the club. There's still 10 players got to go, right? I mean, hopefully, we'll get rid of half of them in the summer, and we get, but this is all on Levy's watch. This is all down to Levy. He put all his eggs in one basket with a stadium. Oh, we ain't really got no money, ain't got the money and all that, right? To do... No, you to have a lot of money. No, well, you know, and, and then now, and now look where we are. We know there's holes in the squad. I reckon we need eight players, you know. I reckon need left back, right back, left centre back. You know, we definitely need a number nine that can score goals. You know, probably two wingers and two midfielders. You know, we, this is going to take time. We're, and we're going to get these results. It happened at right. Celtic, didn't it? Yeah, I think, I think the problem... Right. Oh, sorry, oh, just, just quickly. I think the problem okay. is now... I think we're all agreed as fans. We're pretty sick of the long rebuild that's taken mm. 20 years, aren't we? Mm. So um, <laughs> we're, we're all looking for that instant fix. Trouble is, we're in a position where there is no instant fix unless it's a new owner comes in and goes and splurges a billion or something and buy an entire new squad. It's it's that That's where we're at. Otherwise, whoever does come in is going to need years. It's simple as that. 
you, you, you can't have it without that takeover. So, yeah, Adrian, um, sorry, no, wait, Cooper, I disagree a bit. I tell you, I tell you, like, well, okay, I, I do disagree. The last four years, we've spent maybe 600 million quid, something like that. I don't even know the exact amount, but we've spent a lot. All bigger spenders. Right. If we if we spent that money, let's say we did it over three windows, 300 million, 300, sorry, oh my God, 200 million, 200 million, 200 million. And we bought three or four really good players, Van der Ven level players, 50 million okay. pounds, 60 million times. If we bought, let's say we bought four, three, four, that's 11 players. In three years, with, with the money we've got now under Levy, if we spent it on those calibre of players instead of eight players each time, those 11 players take us to a different level completely in three I years. Agree. I agree. Mm. Even if one or, even if one or two of them don't live up to the hype. Let's say Barella so, comes and he isn't as how, well. Haven't, haven't you just agreed with me, though, Stel? You said in three years we get in those sort of players. <laughs> yeah, so, so I agree. I agree with you about the time frame. I don't agree that we need a new billionaire that's going to come and splash the cash. I, I oh no, I'm, got... I'm saying if we want it right now, this season, like every. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Instant is, yeah, yeah. You do. But you let do. me ask you. Let me yeah. ask you this question: Do you guys have the patience to wait another three years? Because I don't. We got no choice. No, no, no choice. choice. No choice. There's no, no choice. There's holes in the squad. We've got no choice. No, You're not but... going to fix it all in the summer. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I know it sounds crazy, but look at Chelsea, for example. They spend like on 10 players. How about we just do the same thing but on quality and we spend big? Like the four because no one, no spend... club, no club, even we Man City, have got, have got the spending power of a billion pounds in one season. No one can do no, that. But Chelsea did. Chelsea yeah, found a loophole did. and they've changed the loophole rule now. No, you can't do mm -hmm. it. What how Chelsea about just, did but is how about we just they the... amortized their transfer fees over eight years, which was allowed under the previous rule. Right now, mm -hmm. you can give a player an eight-year contract, right? Bring That's him in, kind of but you've got to pay the transfer fee out over five years maximum. So you, can give him a, you can give him a twenty-year contract if you want. It doesn't matter. But that's got to be paid up within five years. Chelsea have done it over eight. They can't be done for it. They can't be done but for it. How about how about we just about do, game? do you do you get no when we sold Kane? How about we just use the pro no the money we made and spend it a hundred like two hundred and fifty mil on top of that? So now you have three hundred million to spend in one summer. I think mean, they did spend Harry Kane money. You're also no, but presuming... we didn't spend the two hundred million that comes from Levy or like the entertainment, the Beyonce D concert. Trick. You could, you could I definitely borrow, had that money. You could borrow on we the spent, Kane we, deal. We spent two hundred and twenty million pounds under Ange. We, yeah. we spent we spent a lot yeah, of money. Only, I think we misspent it. We're no, a lot of fans said we had a great transfer window. I disagree. We are, I don't think we had a great one. No, we are really divided over really some of the buyers, but let's be fair. The recruitment has been. It has improved, doesn't it? You can't say it hasn't improved. Has it? Anything. Has it? No, it hasn't improved. Well, yeah, I think it the dog is a good player. He's better than Davis. I think Van Der Ven's a good player. Adrian, he he can't defend. Adrian is good. The dog is not that good. The dog is not that good, guys. I don't think the dog is crap. I think he's been overhyped. I think he... I think... Do you know what oh, he's, yeah. Oh, I yeah. told you. I told you. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. No, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. He's world class, doggy. He's world class. He's a good young player. He's the best. That over, can that over time, can be nurtured <laughs> into a really Draw. promising talent. But as it stands yeah. now, That's we can't crap. call him a really good signing. We can say, do you know what? He's not bad. He's better than what we had. I think that's a fair thing to say. To really hype him and praise him, I think is crazy because he's shown defensively he's lacking. No, he's, yeah, he hasn't been not, in good form the last yeah, few minutes. It's not hard when you. Not. When we've yeah, but fans said he's your... the best left back in, 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 in the Premier League. Well, no, we, we went, there, busy. Was, there was a stage a few months ago, wasn't it? When <laughs> Poro and Udogi had, I think, was the best stats for fullbacks in the Premier League. They did it once, but now they've, no, now they've fallen off. They've, they've, you know. Udogi is not a good left back. Udogi is a quality left wing, wing back. back, same as Poro. It's exactly what Adoji did in Italy, except he was able to play his way with running it up the side and then cutting in with the ball. Dan, Not playing Dan, this inverted crap. Dan, you know the other thing? You know the other thing? Sorry to cut you off, Fed. Dan. You know the other thing That's is, fine, a wing back, you know what the thing is? You have, when you're attacking or when you're defending or whatever, you have someone. Okay, wing back, you have a center mid and you have a, and you have mm -hmm. a, a center back and you have a winger that can all cover you if you make mm -hmm. a mistake. Right, in the way you guys play, if Udogi makes a mistake, only one person can mop it up. One, and that's the exactly. center back. 
Just that one. Is, so when Udoki makes a mistake, it's not because of the league quality. It's because of the way you play and the fact that if you have a wing back, you can cover for mistakes. Federico DeMarco doesn't like to play as a left back. He likes to play as a wing back. He has Bastoni to cover. He has Chalanoglu. He has Barella, etc. But with you guys, especially the way you play, if Udogi makes a mistake, it's capitalized upon almost every single time. Because right. we only have one player. But, but Steve, Steve, Steve. So, Steve, the problem? If, oh, can, uh, if can I just... Oh, go, if, on, go, on, go on. Go on. Go on. No, yeah, no, go on, mate. No, no. I just want to say, like, do you know when you guys say a mistake? My issue with Udogi, he doesn't make a, a mistake like... Do you know, like, rookie mistake? He makes big mistake that cost us a goal. Like the first goal. Just Newcastle, first goal. Like the first goal. How much of an idiot can you be and a professional footballer making at least six He's been lazy the past five games. And you make those kind of mistakes, giving the ball away. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, sorry, sorry. This is part of the development of a young player. Hmm. This no, is the not. process you have to go through, right? I I've said it a thousand times. If you're going to develop young players, you've got to bring them in the team and take the hit and you get the rewards in two, three years' well, time, which is why, mistakes. which is why if we brought through the youth this season when the expectation was low and everyone said we finished mid table, we could have done it. But what's happened at Spurs is the expectation is now Champions League and just telling everyone we're gonna win the league next season. You can't have patience for the youngsters now. Youngsters Alex Ferguson, it took him four years to bed in the kids. It's taken Arteta three years to bed in the kids. At Spurs, right, you're shit because you can't do it in the first season. It's wrong. The, the mentality for developing young players in this club stinks. That's why Skip has turned to shit. It's why Winks turned to shit. It's why that young Carl Walker Peters, he ended up being kicked out. Parrot's gone. Scarlet's gone. We don't know how to. It's, it's, final it's, bridge. It's the, only one, the only one that's successful is Marcus Edwards at Sporting. That's Dude, it. We don't we don't nurture it, young players at this club. That was limited because... as well, really, wouldn't you? And Manuel Kiu's at Chelsea now. He's, He's all right. right. He's okay. Isn't, isn't this He's why right. a lot of us so really like the idea of Nagel's mm. coming in though? I never liked Nagel's one. I I'm no. I've got I'm not as pessimistic as some Spurs fans about the pathway for a young player. And I'll tell so, so you why. Oh, we know, Adrian. <laughs> you and oh, no. Adrian, oh, no. Adrian, you're not talking about... You're not doing an academy <laughs> section. No way. No, 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 no. Not, not tonight, mate. Not just, well, no, but there's going to have to be room for academy players in the next oh, season. Here we go. Hold on. You've explained it. You've explained the process. You're right. I actually, you're I right. actually, had, a, I actually had a question. I had a question for you guys. What's up with the set pieces? On the defending uh, the set piece. I'll tell you what it is. I've got it here. I've got it here. I think, I think you think guys tell me. Maybe 12 goals from set pieces. No you, you tell me if you agree or not, right? This is the coaching team at Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a guy called Chris Davies, whose career highlights was going 100 games unbeaten with Brennan Rogers when they won the treble um, uh, in Scotland and when Leicester won the FA Cup. So he, he's, he's, he's worked under. Brendan Rodgers, Marjeniak, who only got his badge uh, two years ago. So just so you know, I've had my badges 12 years young, longer than this guy. Uh, he worked at Aston Villa coaching kids. Ange gave him a job as a defensive set-piece coach with two years' experience coaching under 17s. He replaced a man with 20 years' experience. But uh, Rob Birch, um, uh, ex-Fulham goalkeeper coach, given a job at Fulham 2019. Ange gave him a job at Spurs this year. And then Matt Wells, Scott Parker's number two sacked at Bournemouth with Scott Parker and then sacked at Club Rouge again with Scott Parker, given a job with Ange, recommended by Ryan Mason. So, look, we <laughs> don't really have a wealth of experience at quite a decent level amongst the coaching team. So I think when you look at that and then we have conversations about set pieces, I think that's pretty telling. Whereas so Conte, your staff Conte, not a Conte, Conte had a top draw two decades in the game guy doing it. As, as you all know, Stell, I made, I made a huge leap of faith this season with Ange. I mean, <laughs> you I are the injured. Really, really. You don't, I, base, you don't I, I, I absolutely couldn't base it on anything. I just went with it because it made me feel better. But as much as I want to give him a chance, I look at those stats you just brought up about the coaching staff and that does kind of eat away at the uh, idea a little bit, doesn't it? Mm. Just a little bit. 
<laughs> well, Jelly you know, you know was the other thing was the football team as well, and highly rated at Villa. You know so, the other thing. I, that I mean, I, I don't think... know about. I mean, we can be selective and bringing details up about them. I mean, like obviously the other coaches don't really know them. But if they do have high hopes for Ryan Mason, they'd probably get the job after Ange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just mate, you, you know what? Are. If that you, if you that are. happens, that's, that's then, a good bet then I'm out. If if that happens, then I'm out. Yeah. Um, I just got a couple of super chats. I've got to do quickly. Um, being Avishek, big up to you. He says Uno played a high line today versus Arsenal and beat them. Villa don't have overall better defenders than us. Stop this high line thing and let him adapt. <laughs> that's not true actually because in the first half Arsenal were all over Aston Villa it was the second half that they got control of the game so that's not quite true but you're right he did play the high line at, in moments of the game but he didn't play the whole game with the high line and yeah. think, anyway, anyway okay. it's also Arsenal we yeah, have to apply he, some Arsenal tax to that as well he, he, there's, there's, he, some, there's, something, there's something Alex said earlier on and he said it several times already and I have been listening um it makes total sense. And that always comes back to, if we don't want the manager to play this way, then why hire him? Yeah. It's not having the manager play this way, yeah? Not for me. It's having a manager that is too stuck up his own way. Is he naive, like I said, or is he just ignorant? Everybody ripped Conte to pieces because he wouldn't change his style of play. Angie's doing exactly the same thing, and people can't blow enough sunshine up his ass. For no, but Danny reason, said this, he said the same thing he did. But Danny, he's, he's, he's play, told us. Yeah, right. He's told us so. But Alex, that's not the point I'm making. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I get have, what you're saying. I'm not saying no, that you, you don't because I haven't said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but, no, but you, you said the I same thing. You said, I've, heard, I've heard the same thing you said before, innit? I'm just saying. I'm just what saying. I'm not going to go. No, as all you want to see a good manager do yeah. is change at certain <laughs> situations of the game to change to certain ways. He doesn't. He just only sticks to one way. He might have said that, but you would have thought the manager's got a brain on him. Like, at certain points, you have to come back a little bit on that. And this is where I feel he will fail. doesn't matter who you get out there. You can have the greatest defence on the planet. There's one of the best defences I've ever seen. Maldini, Nesta, um, who was it next to him? Panavaro, uh, Yap Yapstam, and Kapu, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Go stick them four there to play that style. They're still conceding 50 goals a season. And we'll get nothing. Yeah, but, Do you know what, what, we'll, what, we'll, what we'll say, though, is Aston Villa, though, what we'll say is Aston Villa, they did have Ollie Watkins, who is the number one striker in the league for combined assists and goals scored, right? Yeah. And... Uh, Moussa Diaby, who we know is a top player, Tillemans, McGinn, Leon they, they had they had some decent players. I mean, Martina, Le Le Leon Bailey. Whereas we're looking at Timo Werner, um, Richie's, uh, uh, Brennan Johnson. I think, I think, I think, I think the, yeah, yeah, but the puzzle is we, we lose to Villa at home, just, we play them off the park, and we beat them four 0 all white. I just, I just want to just team. come back on just what Dan said, yeah. Because I, I I do I hear you, I've heard you before, Dan. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you, but again, it's like and I, I see your point about Conte. Yes, it's the same thing with Conte. Because I said, well, we should not hide him in the first place. Then that was down to Paratigi again, like Nuno Paratigi again, just to just to put the point on about Paratigi, useless. But my point is, right, mm. is that the Angels, and again, I'm not defending. The, I'm I don't like the guy. You know what I mean? I don't like the guy, and I'm defending him because he said what he said. So. We're mugs. We're the mugs because he's told us this. You know what I mean? Why are we even the mugs? Said, he even we said as well. I didn't employ him. Let me see me on my second season. This is a build. He said he's not even that bothered about this season. He said he said you know what? We'll see how high we go. But I just want to learn the play, and that's it. All right? If he does, I think he's going to do tactics in in the summer. I think he's going to try I and do so. that. But I can only go by what my manager says to everybody. Yeah, and he has said, I will change for nobody. This is the point I keep making. I am praying that he actually wakes up and smells the coffee and realises you cannot play this way in the Premiership because the Premiership is too good for his style of play in general. But my... Even what Eric Dyer turned around and said. Now, I know people say, why well, trust Eric Dyer, whatever. But 
Why is he going to come out? Why is he going to come out with a lie like this? Whenever we trained, whenever we trained with Ange, week in week out, as all we did was train Ange's style of play. When they only play one game a week. Now, any decent manager in my eyes sits there. Okay, we do three three days on the way we play. Right now, I'm going to assess the team. I'm going to play, assess its weak spots, assess its strong spot spots, and how we need to cover them. Nope, I'm just going to play Ange way, no other way. Until I actually right. see it, my faith is definitely wearing thin. I'm I, praying that he does, but I don't. Think can, I, can I? Can I? Can I win on this? Can I win this? Just on Alex, that basis, sorry, sorry, still, but I, I have to, I have to, I have to come on that basis. Then I'm looking at my owners then because they knew what they were signing when they got Postecoglou in the first place. Because it's not his fault. Again, we went to him, not no, the other way fault, around. Alex, he was at he's Celtic. Accepted the job. He's he, accepted yeah, but the job. at the same time, at the same time, yep. he's clearly told us and told them how many times said to him and said, "If you don't want my football." Do not hire me. So, I mean, he's told them this how many times? We could have got okay. any other manager if we wanted to. Okay. It was a long so, way down. So I'm, I'm not... I'm not I, 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 I've got to defend Poster Coglu when he's I told us saying. this. And he's but going back clear, to what you're So basically, what you're day. saying, the way I'm taking what you've said then, is Ange is not a winner and he doesn't care about winning. He just wants to play his way. When he should be realising that his style of play is not going to win him no league. He's going to be bloody lucky if he gets anywhere in a cup with it when he plays against a fast team because Fulham and Newcastle just took us apart with the way we play. And yeah. then, obviously, he's meant to realise that, yeah, maybe I have to adapt and change a few things in the Premier League, which might take the season. That's why I'll give him six months next year. And if I want to win something, I'm going to have to adapt. So, is he just that ignorant or that naive or is the man just a loser? No, because he's told us to build this season, though. He said it was a build this season. One minute, one minute, one minute. He said it was a build this season. Let me, so let me I, say something. I don't let understand where this is. This, this argument is because he's told us this. He said he's even said when people say, oh, "Are you going to be um, worried about champions?" He said, "No, no. Why? Why? It, it don't matter because this is the build." And even in in the in his um in Levy's thing when we hired him, he said, but "This is a five-year plan. Yourself. This is a three-year plan. Whatever oh, rubbish he was saying." I yeah, never said that. Never said that. Well, whatever he was saying, it he said something on the lines of that. He said, so, it's like three I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I, I've got to defend him on this because Alex, this is Alex. what they said. This is can what they say, said. And this is why I said, This is why I say I'm skeptical about that statement Alex. because I said, well, What based on what I, can I believe that when you show me how many years now that you can't back your manager when he's gone through a bad time? Alex, Alex, I think just I'm not having a go at you, Dan, by the way. I know you know, you know, you know, you know, there's love between you, me and you, yeah? It's just, I've just said that, I'm proving my point. Can I add something? Can I add something quicker? Managers say things, doesn't mean you should believe it just because they say it. Yeah, that's can I add something? I don't buy, I don't buy that. Mourinho once said, Skip's going to be a future Spurs captain. You know, you can't just go by what they say. For yeah. me, and you right with what with what Andrew's doing, I no, think you no, can no, be. No, no, don't don't rule him out if we get Ryan Mason back, though. <laughs> Cuba, I can't even entertain that even even as a joke. If 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 we can be successful playing Andrew Ball, right? We can. I just I disagree down on that bit. We can, and I'll tell you why. I know we can because Man City do it. The difference is, and this is the I massive difference. Right, Huh? They don't press that high. Not, they do. They play the same high line. Game. Wait, just hear me out. You can do it doing Ange ball. The problem mm. is two things. One, you need a good two, three years to really drill it in. But you are going to take some hits that this fan base is not going to tolerate. I'm telling you, they won't tolerate it. Two, you need to sign outstanding players to play this kind of football. When you look at Man City in their pomp, Greek buyers, Mares, Gundogan, De Bruyne, Rodri, Stones. This is no joke, right? This is no joke, these players. Proper elite performers. We, Our manager said we're not going to do that. And thirdly, you, you have to play at an intensity that is... So quick, you don't allow defender to settle. You don't allow defender to read the game because the ball's already zipped past them. 
We play a very passive pace at the moment. Mm. We're very slow on the ball. A lot of our players, you're thinking, why are you taking so long to release the ball? So for this to work, a lot needs to happen. But at the same time, he's telling us the things that need to happen aren't going to happen under a Spurs ownership. So this is, this is where I'm stuck with it. And, and at, Dan, you are right. You can't do it for 90 minutes. There are moments in the game where you just need to drop off a bit. Yes, you're right. But I think he will do that. I do think he will adapt to that over time. But I don't think he's going to get to that point to do it because the players that we're going to bring in, I don't believe are going to be of the level to pull off what he wants. And, and, and I can see it. This is why I've said I don't rate Brendan Johnson. I don't rate Timo. I don't rate Solomon. I, I've barely seen Solomon. I know he's not going to be good for us. He's not going to be anything special. I look at the midfielders at the moment. I think, do you know what? You're not up to it. The wing backs can't defend. It's like, I, I, I think the surgery at Spurs is far bigger than what people realise. Oh, I yeah, yeah, a, yeah. I'll I think it's at, a lot, lot bigger when, than what... When you do that little comparison, how, how they progressed. Remember when they came to Wembley and Spurs spanked Liverpool 4 1? They had Marino and Lovren. Yeah, and they, also, they also spent Klopp's 75 million pounds on two yeah, players. I know, dude. I know. Let me finish. So, yeah. like, Klopp was trying to play a high press and we destroyed them that day, done them 4 1, right? But then they went out, didn't they? They sold Coutinho and all that, but they brought in Van der Vyck, didn't they? You know, they brought in Robinson and they, and they completely transformed their team. And he didn't cost a fortune, did he, Robinson? They got from Hull, didn't they? I think. Uh, but Van Dijk and Allison cost big bucks. They were the game oh, changers. Oh, he cost seventy-five mil. I think they, but they were the game changers. That was that's what changed everything. Them two. Yeah. Our manager said we're not doing that. This is the problem. This is the problem we've got. How do we do it then? Yeah, I, I think I agree with everything you said, Stel. Um, except that there's the only the only way it could be done without buying ready-made great players is if Good you do have patience is if you do have the patience to develop those youngsters right now and give them those three years to develop. But we don't even play youngsters. We don't and I, I, think, I, think, I think you're right. I, think the, I don't think the fans are going to have patience for it. But we don't I even play that. youngsters. It's why, Kuva, we... what I've been saying. Sorry to interrupt you, D D D Dietrich. It's how, much, how many times have I said what I've said? And that's why I've stuck to what I've said, because the fans won't have any patience and you know our, you know our owners. You know what I mean? We are not going to do what Arsenal did with Arteta. And we're never going to learn. We are never going to learn. Okay. And that's but that's the point I make. It's like, Alex, I proved my point straight away. But Alex, again, I don't want to look like I'm being overly... I'm not, And I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm getting criticism. I couldn't give a monkeys. I'm Mr. Box Office. I don't care. The point is, show, yeah. Show, Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, big up Adrian. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's, um, you know, but it's just like, I don't really care, but it's just like, I'm not trying to be overly, you know, negative and I, I, I'm not trying to be over negative. It's toxic. But it's just, it, so but it's toxic, just, Alex. On this panel today, it's just proven me today why I've said what I said from the very, very get go. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? And even Kuva is now seeing what, what, you know, is getting a bit, a little bit worried, which, Again, I, I, it's not me trying to, because I, I think hey, Scuba should stick to what he feels. You know what I mean? Because you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that he, he feels this way, but it is what it is. Sorry, Dietrich, you were going to say something. No, I just want to say, like you, you mentioned, this is a hit season, so why not play the youngsters and develop them like we did with Harry Kane? He doesn't trust the it. youngsters. He doesn't trust the youngsters. Okay, so He's, why, um... so why, so why say this is a hit season then? Well, yeah, if but I think I think um, Simon Davis um, and him, because Simon Davis is the guy that is a youth director. They, they just don't. I think still said it as well. Said it still told us this that um, yeah. that um, the youngsters um, it, the they because they really work well together, Postacoglu and um, Simon Davis. Okay, they both agree them. that they don't. They don't They're not ready. Uh, not ready. They're not ready. Okay. So okay, that's no. that's why I, that's where I back him a little bit there because Simon Davis is kind of bees knees. He's from Man City, isn't okay, he? So yeah, but I also yeah. disagree so, with them. I also disagree with both of them because you never really know until they're given a crack. Are you telling me yeah. Liverpool knew that those kids in the Carabao Cup final could pull it off? There's no fucking way they knew. They what happened to Liverpool was they had no choice because they're an injury crisis. They had no choice but to chuck them on. And you know what? They proved something. We will never know unless they're given the chance. This is why I disagree with the academy system at Spurs. As much as the implementation changes are good, 
And in three, four years' time, we should see some come through of the Simon Davies era. Mm. Right now, there are players there. You can't tell me Santiago isn't good. You can't yeah. tell me he can't offer us something that Timo doesn't. I'm not. I'm not buying into it. There's I'm worried about Santi. I can't lie. I'm worried about Santi Jimenez. I'm worried. There, 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 no, no, Santiago in the Spurs academy. That's a different player. Yeah, oh, my bad. I'm talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's a couple of kids in the Spurs academy that are capable. And when I speak to the coaches, they think they're capable. But Ange and, and Davies disagree. And they have the final say at the end of the day. They run the show. What is the you, never of the... Know, you never know until they play. Listen, Harry Kane, if he never was given that chance because Saldaldo and Adebayor stunk the place out, if he never had that chance, we would never have seen what happened after that. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like we just... We, we don't give him a chance. Listen... That was Sherwood who gave him his chance and Levy was going, why aren't you playing Soldado? <laughs> Adrian, you're 3-0 down against Newcastle. Well, the game's done, right? It's fucked. We yeah, fucked yeah. it. Mm. Bring on the kids for 30 minutes. Go on. See if you can yeah. make a name for yourself. Look, or, I've, we I've said, forward, Craig, you've got, you got next day squad of 20, right? You've got nine subs now. 11 on the pitch. You can only use five of them subs, six if you've got a concussion. That's 17 players. So if you know as a manager that you're, you know, and you've got like two defenders, two midfielders, two attackers and a goalkeeper in there, whatever, and, and them subs, right? Then you know, as a, why isn't there room for two academy players on that bench each game? Give them a bit of experience. Give them the match day experience. Get the feel of it. Because Ange might... don't want them there. And it's true. Well, Ange doesn't want them there. He's right. He's right. He doesn't yeah. want them there. I mean, yeah, you pro Dan, I, I'm not so disagreeing with you on that. So but I, I just think it? like it should I'm just be done. The answer. <laughs> no, you should... The pathway should be created. If they don't, it should be created because then okay, the other. But Adrian, way, I should be able to leave my car door open and it not get chored. But someone's going to come down and chore it. It's yeah. always buts and maybes and what should. I'm agreeing okay, with what but... you're saying, hundred percent. You're right. But what should, what could, what might? And just don't think they're good enough. Okay, but That's why, it. End okay, but why in the fan forum everyone said, "Oh, we're going to play the youngsters. We got our Tottenham back." So why mention all this bullshit? Well, this is what this is because this is why this is why I say to you stop listening to what people say. Like that, I don't, I don't, I don't listen to what managers say. I don't listen to what Daniel Levy says. For me, I'm at a point now where show me, just show me, and then I'll know. Until I see it, I can't believe it at Spurs because they say a lot of things, and very different things happen at this club. Yeah, you got you, you got to show us. The, the talk, look how talk, long, everyone, everyone talks a good game. Show us. Look how long it's took Foden to shine like he has this season. He's playing brilliantly, right? How long did it take him at City? And they let Sancho go. The wealthiest and top clubs do not play youngsters. Even when Mourinho was at, at Man United, it was only injuries that McTominay got into that team. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't rate him that much myself. It's just work off. But, but I mean, like, you know, it's the he same with most Foden and McTominay. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but people quote it as a youngster. All right, now you've got the young midfielder at Man City's getting a few games. He looks a bit tasty. Uh, Who? Rico Lewis? Oh, Lewis, 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 Rico Lewis, Lewis. Lewis. Right, and like one of your you're playing a youngster at Newcastle, aren't you? I think because you hey, have Lewis, loads of injuries. Really so that's yeah. that's Stell's right. That's when it happens. When you have a horrendous list of injuries, youngsters get played. Oh yeah, the manager the plays young. He wouldn't. Well, most managers are not playing youngsters if they've got a fully fit squad. Adrian, no, we had we had injury. No, we had injuries, and he still found a way to play Ben Davis and Emerson Rodas mm -hmm. centre You just took the and words out of my mouth, Dietrich. We got pumped. Yeah, but what, we, was, no, uh, what was the game that we got pumped with these two idiots? But and the, the and Dietrich, I, 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 me included, was screaming for Phillips and Dorrington to come in. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, um, um, Dietrich. But unfortunately, like I said, because I was saying it at the time as well. But like I said, and th th this is the positive I see out of this club right now with the manager at the moment. Simon mm. Davis and um, Poster Coglu. Do not rate the youngsters at the moment. And if they're in tandem, that's Positive. good because that gives me vibes of um, Pochettino and um, what is his name? Um, I forgot his name now. McDermott. Used to be McDermott. McDermott. Yeah, John McDermott. So, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying because I said it at the time. So I'm not I'm going to be hypocritical, but that's why can we're I not give, playing youngsters because they don't uh, because they don't think they're I ready, you, and that's it. Can I give you a kind of uh, example? When Kane started playing with the first team, people said this guy looks like shit. He has no future. He doesn't look good. 
when they you tried got selling the game him side, before. Everyone was like, oh, no, he's not good enough. He doesn't have a future. But when you got the gate some, you saw the improvements. You saw yeah, that but, it was But hold on, Dietrich, this, this is the problem. Who said he's shit, he's not good enough? Who said that? No, the players around. Van de Vaart said he's like, shit. Everyone was like, oh, the fuck is this guy? Yeah, but Tim everyone Sherwood, the guy that coached him, the guy that developed him, said, no, nah, this boy's going to be brilliant. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes when you look at a player at training, he might be not that good. But, like, just given the game time, he might surprise you. Who knows? Yeah. Listen, Training there's one thing not... there's one thing an academy player gives you that no one else does, and that is the heart and soul exactly. and love for the club. They will give 100%. you 100% because it means the world to them. You won't get that when you pay money for play. Well, you might not. You don't know. If you get, you know, that's why Kane stuck around for fucking eight years. Oh, he would have been gone after three like everyone else does. Van der Voor said yeah. Kane looks like, Kane, I don't think he's going to be a good player going forward. But then so the one young player that will be in the squad next year, and that is Lucas Bergvall. Maybe. He's 50-50. He's, he is crap. I haven't he seen him play. I have no team. idea. But he I will be watching crap. from the Swedish League this summer. I will be. He is crap. He, he might be in the 25, but you ain't How getting in that first crap if we haven't seen him? Bench. Huh? This gets How me. can you say he's crap if we haven't seen him? Because everyone's got everyone's like drinking off on Twitter saying he's not good, but I know he's gonna be crap. <laughs> That's what I'm so saying. So because that. because because people on Twitter say he's good, your your response yeah. is no, he's crap. Yeah, yeah. I always go like the opposite. Well, that's that's logical. He's good. Makes sense. Yeah. I think I've posted about four videos of Bird everyone World. was like everyone was like, oh, Valise is the future number nine. You see him play. Valise is not getting any game time at Civi. That was a horrible loan from the start, and they play with two up top as well. That was a horrible loan. Um, this is what I mean. Easy, this, is, this is what I mean. Question. No. Sorry, I was go on. I'm breaking the. I'm breaking the subject. Though, what I was going to ask. <laughs> change it, change it. All right. Um, who thinks we need top four this season? I you know my anyone? thoughts on I this. Not bothered. I don't want. I know it. you know my thoughts so, on so this. Either. Either. So, so would it be safe to say we all agree that the most important thing is what happens this summer? Mm. Yeah. No, because this summer would dictate okay. Champions League. If we get Champions League, it's right. going to dictate this so, summer. So if that's the case, I think short term, we got to look at the team, say, coming on to Christmas next season. And if we haven't improved, then Ange is going to be a failure. That's it. Mm. And until then, we, we've got to see, literally see an improvement in the team. And that's now, how will we be the one that the agreed? Uh, we'll know that the signings that come in the summer, the ones we've got in recently... What angels? What are not oh, angels? Cool. You know what I mean? well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a curveball. I'm gonna throw a curveball, Kuva. Right. So, got my coach's hat back on now. I need yeah, to need see an house. improvement in the team, but not necessarily an improvement in the results, because we Agreed. can play a lot better, but still lose. But we can see. Yeah. Hold on. We, we've we're, we've we're, got we're, to look at least competent and what we're doing, haven't we? Yeah. How and likely is that? Do you guys think? think the manager is going to have to adapt Thank to do sign. this. I'm 100% with you, Kuva, and what you said, Stel, is right as well. I said I give him end of this season, just just get on with it, mate. Just get on with it now. Well, he's Steve, got six we, months we from been... me. If Let me finish. He's got six months off me, where as all I want to see him do is if it ain't going right in a game, change it a bit. Try and do something. And do you know what? If we lose the game... Okay, fine. Not going to be happy with it, but he's progressing and he's trying different things. If he just sticks the same way of sit on the halfway line and do nothing like he did this whole season and wait until we're three 0 down, then I'm Ange out. But there's no point going Ange out now. We've still got to give him more time to see if he will adapt and get the players. If, if so he's, do I'm if he's doing that, you're saying. yeah, if he's doing that next season, I agree with you. I'll, I'll be Ange out then because I know we're going nowhere. Can um, yeah, well, I've, got the theory, I've got the theory about this season, all these frustrating lack of substitutions happening. I think he's having a look at the players and working mm. out who's got it, who's who responds to the halftime talk, who's got a bit of character that can... That's what Adrian game. said. That's yeah. Adrian um, said. And it's difficult because we don't really know what Andrew's thinking all the time. That's, that's always going to be the frustrating thing as a fan, isn't it? Um, so he keeps playing Basuma when Basuma has been that crap. Yeah, he he's going to decide if he wants to keep him, hasn't he? Um, how how are well, you going to do that if you don't play him? I don't know, mate. Well, yeah, I'm over good. apart from the first five games, I'm sorry. Looking at Basuma, who yeah. was one of my favourite players at the start, it don't take Einstein to work out that he's been absolute dog shit all season. Yeah, right. and maybe even though Hoiberg ain't good, we all know that. But you know what? Go stick Hoiberg in there because he ain't going to do worse. 
Or if you want on, someone on, who can be DM on, on, on the, and on the, on speak Benton yeah. Cord out. On, on the flip side, if we know Hoybier is going to be leaving in the summer, what's the point in playing him now? Yeah, yeah because we might want to because we might want to win something, win a game. But we're, we've agreed we're not going to hit the top three. So what are we no, playing? But, but the manager should still be wanting to win games. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not sure, being funny. It doesn't I was going to ask. I was going to come on to this. I was, was going to come on to this. Do you think Ange cares about winning games this season? No. Yes, he does. It doesn't well, he does, like he does, it. but I just don't think he, he's, he's made it clear, and I agree with him. I've said it myself already. I've said it before. He's even heard him. I don't. Right, he, right, he doesn't right, care right, about let, Champions let, League. Let me, why, why does he care about you, Champions League? Let me ask you why. Let me tell, let me ask you why. Um, I ask this question again. Coaches, hat on. When you want to win, you do have to have that mentality at all cost, no matter what it takes. We've got to get it over the line, right? <clears throat> okay, there are certain rules. Not if you're going to end up destroying a, a person's health okay there, there are certain rules that come into play but when you're developing when you're developing it's not win at all costs i'll give an example if i've got a player who's right footed and i'm trying to teach them how to use their left foot and they play on the wing i'm going to play on the left wing and say i want you to hug the touchline don't invert so now i'm forcing them to use their left foot i know errors are going to happen i know mistakes are going to happen but I'm going to see what you're made of and if I can develop you, okay? So I still want to win the game, but not at all costs, meaning the development comes first. Whereas if you want to win a game, it's no, no, no. You're playing on the right wing because that's what you're fucking good at and you're going to do this, this and that for me. Do you think Ange is more in the development mode where he's, I, I do want to win, but not at all costs, not 100%. whatever it takes. Do you think he may be in that phase? I'm just putting it out there. I'm not. I'm not saying oh, that's what I think. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. No, 100 percent because I, I, that's the vibe I've I've seen for long um, for this season. Yes, and he he's been saying certain stuff. Kuva, I think you might be able to help me on this because you're very good at this. I think he said a few stuff <laughs> that's Kuba. kind of you know um, <laughs> that um, you know that um, you know uh, um, that that shows me this is a build season, and he he has been consistent. He has been consistent. Again, I'm defending the guy again. Well, I don't even like the guy again. You know what I mean? You know? So it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not being biased from seeing the manager because I don't like him. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if, Cooper, you you know, because I know you're very good at this sort of thing because you're very good at his um, quotes. I don't know. No, no. Well, I, I forget all the details. I'll just wing it, mate. Everybody knows that by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. I, I, just, um, I, just, I just got the gist of what was happening at the time and I know for me, this season was all about instilling a way of playing, a new way of playing at the club. Results, I wasn't expecting it to be any better than last season. We're just changing the way we do things. And you're not really going to get any significant improvements, hopefully, next season. Um, hopefully, the season after that, even better. That's the way it should be working. Um, I think the very fact that we're still in the mix for the top four at the moment is quite remarkable considering what happened at the end of last season. You know, losing our star striker, our best player by a mile at that point. I know Sonny's great and everything, but Kane, let's face it, Kane has been our oh, Mr. Tottenham for years. Um, he, he's our main source of goals. He's our, he was our main source of creativity as well. So when you take all that on board and all the new players coming in, new style of play, uncertainty about the future, even had takeover rumours and stuff like that happening. Um, we're an absolute mess. I think if you take all of that into consideration, all Ange really had to do was try and play a bit more attacking football, as as Dan said. That that was the plan, and um, uh, just hang in there, just uh, steady the ship, and we'll we'll knock on from there. But um, it's been a mess, and it hasn't been fun to watch all the time, and we haven't looked like it's been attacking football. But the intent was there. We are playing in the opponent's half of the pitch. There's no doubt about that. So we are trying to be a very attacking team. We're just playing it really badly. And Stop. that is down to players. I, 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 you, you look at Madison. We know Madison can be great, but he's clearly struggled since coming back yeah. from injury. Yeah. But we still also been... don't have anybody else like it in the team. In the entire he's also been sitting deep. Now, that ain't yeah. Madison's style of play. Madison has always pushed forward, even if he starts oh, yeah. in the middle. He's always pushed forward or he plays on the far left. Why is he sitting so deep now? Is he sitting so deep because Ange just told him to do it? 
Or is he sitting so deep because these inverted wing backs are getting in the number 10 positions and there's no place for him to do anything? I, th I think it's, some not, it's an I honest think question. I think sometimes yeah, not, it, it, it might be on the player sometimes. He's, he's spotted mm. little weaknesses like, say, against, remember the home game against Bournemouth where they really pressed us high up mm. the pitch. We were pinned back there. We were struggling to get our passes away. And mm. Madison dropped beat deep to pick up the ball there, but he also added to the numbers at the back there, more passing options. So their press was nullified. Now, whether that's tactical from the manager or the player taking it on himself, there was a reason mm. for it. And I think we're seeing lots of these things happening and we just aren't going to know whether that's a deliberate plan that they've talked about before the match or whether it's the player taking it on their own metal to go and do something. I think mm. Madison's an intelligent player, so I think he might have done yeah. it himself. Okay. I was, it was a serious question. I don't know. That's why I was asking. So, fair play. Uh, guys, I've got a couple of mate. super chats. I've got a couple of super chats. Brilliant. Uh, Steve, do you need to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a dip. I'm going out to dinner with a friend. But, um, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Take really, it easy, mate. Good to see all of you guys, as always. Um, Steve, don't forget the 16 yeah. out of 10. Hey. <laughs> 16, oh, that was a 16 out of 10 performance from Newcastle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Guys, we've got 400 people watching. Smash a like, subscribe to Strasbourg Steve. Make sure you follow his channel. He covers every European game. You've never seen anything like it. The guy's insane. Go check it out. Take care, boys. Big up, Steve. Care, Steve. Big um, up. I've got a couple of super chats to do, but very quickly, it's been a while. Completely forgot. Just want to quickly say thank you to our channel sponsor, Arsenal Tears Beer, the premium alcoholic beverage. For all you bottle jobs out there, thank you to the channel sponsor. Much Where's love. Where's Stefan? Where's Stefan? Um, he's drowning in his Arsenal tier beer. So, <laughs> you know, hopefully, you better come on Thursday. Uh, a user, big up. He says the certain new players got praised because they started in an Ange system. Other teams will get to suss out. Look at the first ten games. Now look at us. So he's saying that managers have sussed us out i think there is some truth in that for sure we I have agree. We, we've discussed it many a time on our channel uh, he also says another super chat from a user thoughts on sending richie romero and kulu i'll come back to this in just a minute a user i just want to do the last super chat from dio who says this squad isn't good enough to compete in the champions league they would struggle in the conference league with short weeks and no depth listen enik out we totally agree one game a week we've said it many a time on the channel we need better players if we're going to have uh, the ability to rotate and not have this big drop-off. Because at the moment, as soon as someone gets injured, the drop-off is massive. Guys, what's your thoughts on this? Would you sell Richie Romero Kulu? Would you sell any of those players? I'd sell I Richie. Sell, except Romero, it's all those two. We players. can't afford to get rid of Rome Romero and Kulu yet. But we Romero, could, no we, Kulu. We'd yet. have to no, get no, rid of Richie. Adrian, would you, would, you, would you sell them is the question, not... Forget replacements. If they say there's a replacement, would you sell? Would you sell any of these players, guys? Um, I no. I'll, I'll sell Richie easily. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to be a hypocrite, and I'm uh, you know I'm not going to be a hypocrite at all. Um, I said that a couple of times now. Um, Richie, to, I'll sell him tomorrow. Um, and Kulu, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be too fussed if he gone either. Romero stays by default at the moment because at the moment, yesterday was embarrassing at the end of the game. Absolutely embarrassing. Picking was, fights whenever he wanted to well, pick fights. He was Why missing for all four goals. But Richie, for me, he's gone at the end of the season anyway, I think. He hasn't got the mentality for this one. Um, I think he's going to end up in the Far East. Kulu, I'd want to keep him if we played in the right way. But we don't, and we're not gonna. But so I'd sell him as well. He doesn't. He doesn't even fit the system. He always played counter-attacking football. So clearly, we should sell him. He I'm saying sell goals. him because we're not going to play him the right way. Yeah. Um, he plays just in Connor... No, sorry, gone, gone. Sorry to interrupt you, Dan. He he plays for Sweden's attacking midfielder, and he's done a very good job at it. it. And when he went Juventus, they knocked him out of the wing because he weren't good enough. And they played him up there with Ronaldo. We are not going to play him to his potential, so to like his best. So yeah, sell him. God, we've got I'm... too many players to go before they before he goes, though. Just want to say, I see, agree with that. I can see Connor mm. in the chat. Just want to say, Connor, uh, it's now 
eleven thirty p.m. So good evening to you, my friend. Good mm -hmm. evening. Have a wonderful evening. I mean, uh, I, think, I think we're probably gonna, even going to have to keep Richie, even though I say sell him, mm. because I still think he's the closest we got to a traditional sort of number nine. Ange, mm. You can tell Ange doesn't like Richie. You can tell. But we don't use Richie to his potential either. The only thing he's crap. You know anyway. Lee. I can't stand him. Do you guys know Lee on our me. channel? Uh, Lee, who does the Monday podcast. And the <clears throat> yeah, Lee and Ingmar. He he's adamant, like absolutely adamant. That <coughs> we've signed Dragusin because Romero's off in the summer. Do you think no, that, think that so. might be. be true? Could be. No. Could no. be. Who he could pretty much go to it. Who would buy him? Pretty much most of the clubs in Italy, if they could afford him. Nobody and can afford him. Depends so who if they sell him? up probably in in or you they could, but apart from that, no, they can't. Napoli can't, AC Milan can't, and no one else has got a pot to piss if, in when it comes to Italy. You're right. If the, if the Italian league wasn't broke and Barca wasn't broke, I would say he might leave, but I think nobody can afford him. Skip should yeah. go. He's not going to get no game time. And then you've got Lacelso should go. Roden's three. Regalon's four. Gill's five. Spence six. Emerson seven. Parrot eight. Oiberg nine. Tanganga ten. Richarlison eleven. And we'd have to give Ndombele now, on his twelve. You know what? You see, with Skip, someone said on the show I was doing, uh, what was it, this morning or yesterday? One or the other. Yeah. It was yesterday. I think yesterday. I think some someone actually, I can't remember who it was, but they made a very, very good point. Charlie. Crystal Palace, I would love to go for Ezzy or who's their left winger? Mm. Alosa. Um, Olisa. I, Olisa. Olisa. I can't pronounce his name, yeah? Either way, one of them two, I, well, I'd like both of them because they're better than what we've got, but Ezzy definitely. I honestly think give Crystal Palace a bit of money, what they want, and offer someone like Skip, I think they'd take it because he is a Premier League player, but he is a mid standard player as such. I reckon we could actually use him to knock a bit of money off the price and also give Crystal Palace something in return. But I'd be happy with that. But, opinion. He's, but he's academy trained, Dan. And we've got the two goalkeepers. You've got Whiteman, Austin. You've got mm. Skip. You've got Sessignon. And you've got Tanganga. They're academy trained. We have to have four academy trained. So we could get rid of Skip. But then mm -hmm. you've got to keep the other four. That's why they reckon Austin will be given or, a new... Or you can bring through one that's in the under-21s instead, no? Yeah. They've got to be academy trained, and I think they've got to be over 21. So Parrot might be included because he's 22 now. Because you have to do those three years I can't, before, I can't believe you found a way to talk about Parrot. We've got two and a half hours. You well, found a way. <laughs> no, I mean, you, well, this decision has made. Does he come in a squad next season or do we sell him? You know, there's, there's lots of decisions got to be made in the summer. <laughs> It was I just an idea that someone said on me on my show, know. and I thought I it was a good. I thought it was actually a good idea. That's why I mentioned it, and I hadn't thought of it before. And I do think he could be used. He should think of his career, Dan. You're right. He should go. I, I think I think Skip's more likely to go to one of the teams that comes up because they're going to be struggling to stay up, mm. and they'll look Possibly. at him as having a bit of Premiership experience. Um, how much do he feel anyway? Look, we, he knows we're in for Conor Gallagher or whatever it is, or other midfielders. He can't even make the match team now. He's going to be pushed even further down the line come the summer. Dan, you're right. He's got to go. He has got. He should be sold. We could bring in over £100 million. We ain't going to sell all the 12 players I mentioned. Yeah, right? but what I'm we saying is... Four or five for 50 mil or something like that. Selling that Skip, good. we'd be lucky if we see, what, 10 mil for him. And the only reason we see 10 mil is because... He's English, basically, yeah? Mm. But using him as a bit of bait at someone like Palace, you could put his price up a little bit with that one. I, yeah, or, I honestly or, yes, don't think Leicester, it's a bad idea. He could go to Leicester and we could get Dewsbury Hall or uh, Indeed. Yeah, you know, like we did with Winks, basically. <laughs> and I, f I don't think that's a bad idea to at least try that mm. as such. Because you know Ezzy is going to be, what, 65, 70 mil, and that's if we're lucky. We don't need him, do do we? We don't need well, of course we, him. We if need a right Bergwald, winger all day long. If we've got Bergwald we coming Zoom. in and that, and I think we're... We until, well, depending on who we clear out, Dan. But what? I you would say no to Ezzy over Kulazewski and Johnson? And... Uh, How many Lusso goals has he scored? He's at Crystal Palace, and I think he scored about eight, uh, I guess, eight or nine. Mm, so that's decent, then. Put him at a better club. And 
they perform better, usually. Does and he he's also English, and he's blatantly better than Johnson, and you guys Hulu, see we all a... know, just don't do it. Did you guys see his performance against Liverpool today? He was phenomenal. Yeah. As a... Crystal Palace surprised me. Do you, know, do you know what? I have to say, I have to say, that Glasner, the manager at Palace, he's decent, you know. Mm. He's a good manager. He won. You see the yeah. difference? He won a Europa League, so he has pedigree, unlike Ange. Is it, was difference? he at Frankfurt? Yeah, he won the Europa League. Yeah. Won the Europa Cup, didn't he? Yeah. He's a good manager, yeah. man. But again, yeah, he'll, 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 going, from that, going from that very sort of negative way of playing they had before, making mm. them quite an attacking, attractive side now. Yeah, it's really impressive, isn't it? To be fair... It's only a matter of time before he comes unstuck. Once their best players are sold and he's going to have to rebuild with mediocre players. He'll, it, Palace is like a poor man's version of Spurs. Like a really poor version of Spurs, really, aren't they? You, you got, you got, you take them to a certain point and then your best players leave and then you kind of got to change manager because it falls apart and you go again. But we just do it at a higher level. Yeah, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, if you, if you look at, uh, especially when it comes to hanging on to your talisman player for way too long to cash in on them when they're at their peak. Yeah, that's us, all right. And they do it too. Um, got a super chat from User X who says, attackers didn't perform. One mistake in the opponent's block leads to a goal-scoring opportunity. Bracket, Sun last game. Zero confidence with only two guys behind them. I don't it's get that. Sun's fault. He hasn't got better strikers up with him. That's not his fault. He scored 15 goals this season. He Can, we talk, about Can we talk He's about Sun? Can we talk about Sun? Yeah, would then. you, would you, look, I don't think anyone will deny he's going to need replacing in the not-too-distant future. Mm -hmm. Coutinho was sold at Liverpool in his prime for big money to fund two players they desperately needed at Liverpool, right? It was a strategic move and it paid off. doesn't mean that if every other club does that, it pays off. But if we are genuinely rebuilding... You want to keep your best players, right? You don't want to be selling Sun, but because he will need replacing in a few years' time, is there a conversation maybe to have that is it worth cashing in on Sun whilst we can get decent money for him and using that money to buy players can that are we? going to be a more future prospect to replace Sun, whereas waiting for Sun to just get really old and become zero value and then can I, we can't even I use him to, to refinance. Yeah, go can for I it. it. So... Me personally, I would sell him, even though he's a phenomenal finisher. But just look at it this way: like, forget the emotional side. Where does he fit in Ange's system? Is he a striker? Is he a left winger? Because when we play a low block, you can tell he struggles. And when it's left, they all struggle in a low block. They do tricks. The whole team struggles in a low block. No, I'm saying like honest. really, son as striker, like a number nine, like he cannot, he cannot win a header. So he is, and he hasn't logically. got the strength for it, and he doesn't have the strength. So. Where does he play? We're talking Let's about the best finisher at the club with both feet, who's our main goal scorer and threat, who loves no, the club, who won't position? leave. He, I don't think he'll leave of his own volition. I mean, maybe in a couple of years, Saudi might still pay a ridiculous amount of money for him. But I don't see Sonny going anywhere. He loves the club. He no, might even stay in some capacity at the end of his career. I can see him being given a two-year contract in the summer with a year's extension. Because they've got the no, option. The, only, the only reason that Spurs are going to hang on to him and not sell him blatantly Revenue. is because it is Son and because of the... You just said it blatantly there, Dietrich. It's because of the money he brings into the club. He brought in more money into the club than any other player in that team, more than Harry Kane, more than anyone else has ever done. And that is why Levy kept him. Yeah, but Dan, I'm and asking you, opinion, as a fan, would you consider selling him whilst he's worth something still to yeah. reinvest in the club or is it a case of no keep him because he's that good and he's got to be part of the plan no sell him i'd sell him because he's blatantly on the way down he's 31 he's past his peak his pace is already a yard behind still a quality finisher no two ways about it but he can't hack this system through and through when teams play deep like they do, because that is the way you suss Spurs out, and that's pretty much what 90% of them do. He can't hack it there. He, he hasn't got the muscle for it. If anything, Richarlison is better in that sort of game than him, and Richarlison is crap. But Son, 31, he's going to be on his way down. If someone comes and offers us 60, 70 million for him, take it, 
as long as it will be spent in the club. But that one, we'd have to we'd have to wait and see. But yeah, I'd sell him. I don't think he's lost that much pace, Dan. When when he's he when he broke so from pace. midway, he's and lost half, a lot of pace. Got, just that goal. Who was it? The other home game when he broke. He might not have the afterburn as he had against Chelsea at Wembley when he comes down the right wing and makes Diaz. What's his name? The guy they bought off of Chelsea. Mm -hmm. No, it was Joe Junior. No, it was the other guy, Diaz. Wasn't it as big quick as Luis, 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 wasn't it? Luis. And he just taxi for Luis, isn't it? And he scores that goal, right? He, he might he might have lost the afterburners, but he's not slow. He's not slow. I didn't he say he was slow. slow. I said he's lost pace. He's still quick. No two ways about mm. it. His acceleration is still very quick. But he has he lost a yard or two of pace. So Salah. Salah's lost a yard or two of pace. It's the age. It happens. That's all I'm saying. He's lost a but bit of pace. Salah will probably go for big bucks in the summer. And we Sun can still sell him for two years old money. In the He's 32 no, I years old. Right. I, I we get 70 million off to sell him. Yeah, I don't even think it's the pace so much he's lost. It's just obviously the stamina. He can't do it all game long, can he? So he's, he's going to have to pick but, his moments. But it is pace mm. as well that he has lost. Stamina, maybe, quite possibly, but he has lost pace. Mm. It is a fact that 9.5 players out of 10 start losing their pace when they start getting to their 30s. They do. And well, that's be... not being raw to son or nothing like that. That's just how that's just how 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 it goes in the football, basically. I haven't seen it be any different. So he's on the way down. Blatantly, he's on the way down. He's not oh, Harry Kane. Harry Kane, you can relate. He has never gone for pace, and Harry Kane will probably be, unless he gets an injury, be able to play until he's 38. Why? Because he's a Teddy Sheringham. Why? Because he's similar to Rooney. He will be able to step back and it's play where he doesn't even that. need to run. Like Oliver Son, Giroud, he's still playing, Son, isn't he? Still Son, playing? Son rely, relies on his pace for the way he plays. He needs that pace. And every striker that has needed pace out and out to do what they do finishes a lot quicker than a player who doesn't rely on he's, pace. There's a bit more to him than that, Dan. He's got very quick feet around the penalty area to get a shot. Oh, of course he has. But he's, he's not, not going to lose just, that. He's not going to lose not just, that. Yeah, but he hasn't got the mentality of Harry Kane where he can make something out of nothing just like that. He can do it now and again, but not like Harry Kane. He does not read a game like Teddy Sheridan did, like Harry Kane did. Son does need his pace in general. Now and again, he might not, but in general, he does need his pace and he's losing it. And he's coming down because he's coming up for 32, which most stri fast strikers do. Sell him. Well, they evaluate his stats, you know, so like that'll all be taken into consideration come the end of the season when they offer him a new contract. And true, true. I was going to say, if you're going to, if we were going to sell Sonny, for me, it would have been at the start of this season mm. when he just go full change, Kane's out, Son's out, new dawn, lower the expectations, don't worry yeah. about Europe. Relegation. Yeah. yeah, completely wipe the slate clean. Um, and really build a young squad from nothing, almost from nothing. Um, I mean, that would have been the time to do it. But we have captains so. on, on here. Walker's 34 and he hasn't lost some pace. Yes, he has. He's still bloody quick. It was because he was that lightning fast. He's still quick, but he has lost some pace. You do as you get older. That is a fact. Mm. Yeah, Carl Walker, Carl Walker has lost pace. He has. He has lost. Yeah, he's, he's, st he's still bloody quick, but he yeah. has lost a bit of pace. Salah was really fast. He's still quick, but he has lost a yard or two of pace. Same mm. as Son. And Son relies a hell of a lot on his pace to do his best. And playing him as a pressing forward, basically, or whatever you want to call it, where he sits in the box most of the time, that's not Son's game. He just gets sandwiched. He has not got the strength for it. He can't head the ball come love nor money. So... Sell him. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up in about five minutes because it's almost been three hours. Look, I, I, I think this loss against Newcastle was a turning point in fans' um, mindset as to what's going on at the club. I, I, I honestly think that if we go on and lose the next three games, it's just going to be Conte toxic vibes. I just feel it. But oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we will lose the next three games. I don't. Mm. Uh, I want to talk. I just want to quickly talk about the next game, Arsenal, and then we'll wrap it up. Mm. My view is this: Arsenal losing today 
that the, 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 the bottle job is creeping in. It's the business part of the season. Now the pressure's on and they're showing that the minerals might not be there. Bayern Munich, no fans. Not the best Bayern Munich team in a long, long time. They went and put two goals past Arsenal. Aston Villa put two goals past Arsenal. Arsenal even scored today. I think if Arsenal get knocked out of the Champions League, I think that dents their confidence. And I think it opens the door for us to actually turn up in a North London derby, not win, because I don't think we're good enough, but to get the draw. I think if Arsenal beat Bayern, we're in trouble. I think we're in trouble in the North London derby. But I don't. I think depending on what happens with Bayern Munich, I think it opens the door for Spurs to bounce back, but not lose, not win, but get a draw in the North London derby, which does set us up for the next games better. Because if we do lose in the North London derby off the back of this, it's going to just be fucking horrible again. So who I'm, else I'm, they got still? Yeah, who else they got? They've got Bayern. They've got Luton. They've got Luton Town. No, they've got Luton. No. Yeah, but look, I, 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 I personally think as it stands now, subject to change, depending on what happens in Europe. I think Spurs will get the draw against Arsenal because I do think we're different at home. Our away record has been absolutely wretched. But at home, we do have that spurt of energy where we can cause problems. So I, mm. I think I don't think we'll beat him. I'm saying that now. We're not going to beat Arsenal. I, don't, I just don't see it. But I'm going to say the North London derby, I think Spurs get a draw. That's my view. What about what about you, Dan? I know you're petrified about this game. You said to me, oh, you're, but, like I said, the, the other day, uh, yeah. One second, Beatrice, um, I'll come around to you. No, I'm saying they have Wolves, not not Luton Wolves. Next oh, sorry, they got Wolves. Is that home or away? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Molina. Oh wait, uh, no, mm. that, that's that could go anyway. Wolves, you don't know. Can we, you get good mm. Wolves? They're like Fulham. Could be good or bad. They got know. three games, and then they've no. got Wolves, Wolves. Then uh, and they've got another game as well. Oh yeah, sorry, they have Chelsea too. No, the main thing. Sorry, 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 Dan. Sorry, Arsenal play Bayern, Bayern Munich Wolves. away, Wolves away, and Chelsea before they play us. Yes, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I, think did, I, get, I, think, own... I think I I was sticking my guns. I think we get a draw. Right. Yeah, they're playing uh, now. Chelsea uh, at home. It only takes one Chelsea or two things to weird, change weird, your mind in football. Yeah. That is why football is good. Up until I just heard that, and up until what I saw today, and I still am, I haven't been scared of playing Arsenal or playing a team in general for about seven years. Yeah, there's games you know that it's going to be hard, you're going to get banged. But this game against Arsenal genuinely scares me. After what happened today, I'm not petrified. I'm just scared. Now that I've heard they've got to do Chelsea on top of the other two, I'm not so scared, but I'm still wary with the way we play. If they beat Munich and then go and at least beat Chelsea and come at us with the way they play, and if we start sitting up at that halfway line, they are going to tear us a new one. And they can actually hammer us a good 5-1. Because look at the way they play. Okay, people can say, yeah, but it was free all when it was at Arsenal. Yeah, and Arsenal hadn't even started playing football yet. We was on a peak more than them. If, if we play our way and Saka gets on it and Martinelli gets on it with some good balls off of Odegaard and that, as all Odegaard's got to do, straight over the middle, and he's better than any Newcastle player that can do it, they will tear us a new one, and I won't deny it, this one scares me. But after what I've just heard and after what happened today, I'm not so scared. But I am still double wary of this game, and it's purely down to Angie's tactics. I think we'll come out of it with a draw minimum. I think the players will be really up for it. The crowd will, you know that. So, like, I, I just think we always seem to do it after we have one of these uh, bipolar results. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we've been we've been inconsistent and flaky, but we've also been very resilient throughout this season as well at times. That's why we're fifth. It's, it's amazing, like Kuva said, how we are fifth, actually. It's quite remarkable. It's because other teams have been pretty crap this year, basically. Like Chelsea, Aston Villa have been very good, but had their moments. Man, you have been useless. Well, the more reason why we've got to have a very good summer transfer window, and it's more important. Oh, than I agree. For years, for years it is because we've we've got our iron out this inconsistency. It's got to be ironed out, and that's Angie's job to sort that out. 
he's got to have a he will he, he'll have a look at his squad. He's not gonna say he's not gonna slag any player. You don't do that when you're a manager, not in public. You shouldn't do it, right? So he'll have an idea and they'll have a big list of players in various positions. So Johan Langer will have it and uh we'll see. Well, we're all, we will, I suppose, I spoke to some fans. They just wish the season was over. We're in the Europa League. They, they, want, they want to know what we're getting in the summer. That's what everyone talks to me about. What are we getting in the summer? It's Alex. It's going to be a hard game. Alex, North London Derby, what do you think? Um, it, I, I said, I think it, we can get a draw out of the game because we're at home. Um, yeah, I, I, at the moment, I think we can get a draw at the game because I think I think we, we you know I think we all I think I think it'll be um, a very interesting but tense game as well. Mm. So um, I, I think, and also it depends on when when the game's played as well because if Arsenal get through, um, I think the game's going to be changed to twelve thirty, isn't it, on the Saturday as well, um, yeah. rather than the Sunday um, yeah. at two. So, um, but yeah, at the moment, I think. For me at the moment, I think we can get a draw. Regardless what happens until then, I think we can get a draw. Um, because I think the pressure can get to Arsenal if we play it right. Well, we won't have Larice throwing the ball in the net, will we? No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um but um yeah, yeah, I, I you know, I was kind of really pleased. I, was, I had a bit of a smirk on my face when Arsenal lost today, to be honest with you, because it was kind of dawning on me if they did lose. Uh, did they lose today? The championship. Huh? <laughs> they lose today? <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. That's um, why Pep was drinking some... Uh... <laughs> Good segue there. But yeah, did yeah. No, the no, no, just ask question. Though. Huh? Did you get the pictures I sent you? Mate, my, 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 as soon as they lost, I literally got, I received about 60,000 memes. Right. <laughs> Everyone could, we're so desperate for happiness that their misery just made us like feel great. <laughs> and plus, I don't want to lose 100 quid. Oh, you made the bet. You made the bet with Stefan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. What a what, bet what, that is. What, what time of day is the Arsenal game? Was it, it's an early kickoff, isn't it? No, it, 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 it depends on whether they get through. At the moment, it's yes, it, it will be at two o'clock on Sunday. But if Arsenal get through Bayern Munich, I think it's changed to Saturday at twelve thirty. Uh, and then fifth way, place gets you Champions League. <laughs> I either way, I don't fancy us to do anything in that one. Unfortunately, I think I hear you though. I think I think if we were going to beat them, it would be an evening game. A lot of our fans had plenty of time to be on the beers. Get the noise levels up, get it hostile, and then players are going to be flying into them like it, like there's the mm -hmm. you know the all terrier like performances, and that means the front three as well. And I, I just don't see it from our front three. Um, Wouldn't it be Timo, great, Sonny, they're, diff they're only weak like spot in defence. We spank them. Yeah, I, I think I think we just got to absolutely fight them like demons to uh, get something out of the game. There, I think we could do it, but. I, I just don't see it in an early kickoff. I, I see it being them controlling the game and it going quite flat, and our crowd being pretty quiet. Um, then again, they did bottle it today again, didn't they? So who knows? Just Strange, can't tell you know, this league we, at the moment. We, we play Villa off the park at home and lose the game. We go away and we beat Villa four nil, and then Villa go to Ibury and win two nil. It's just yeah. football. And, yeah, you know, it, says. it says it all. That's why the Premiership is what it is. I do, I do worry. I, listen, I'm not. Listen, I I know where I'm at with this club. Everyone knows what my feelings are, but I do, I do worry that it's going to get toxic because um, if we do lose that game, because I know that, and I think Adrian could agree with me, and Stella can agree with me as well on this. Um, when you're at the stage and when it gets bad, and especially in the North London derby. You see fights, you know what I mean. So that's that's what I'm a bit nervous about a little bit. And I think I think I do. I mean, I, unfortunately, I, I think I mean it just is the way it is, isn't it? Unfortunately, um, but you know, I just I just hope that we don't get violent. You know what I mean towards each other. 
Um, Basically, Romero so kicking seen... off. Well, I've, you know, I've... I'm not even. I'm not even <laughs> talking about the players. I'm talking about the fans. Um, oh right, sorry, I misunderstood. I, I kind of, yeah, I, I, kinda, I, I kinda like now. the toxicity. I'm not going to lie. I like the toxicity because what what what, to, what toxicity signifies is that there is a problem at the club, and that um, there is there there are underlying issues that aren't being resolved, and that toxicity brings it to the surface. As much as I don't actually like toxicity itself, I like it when it's at our club because it means fans can't just say, "Yep, yeah, okay, it's all good now. We're happy." Mm-hmm. I don't want that. I don't want that I unless it genuinely is happy. Uh, the, genuinely... Only, the only reason why I say it is because there's kids around, uh, kids around, and that's I don't, I just don't, I just don't like it. And but we're doing it for it, the kids. We're doing it for the kids, so their adulthood is pleasant. Yeah, you yeah, know, but, but I, don't, I don't really, I don't think that's. I, I can't really go to that point, as Lewis. I can't say that. I can't say that. But um, you know, but I just, I just feel that 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 for me. I think people need to be a bit more respectful, you know what I mean, and that's the side of things, you know what I mean? Because... Alex, it's a fucking North London derby. What are you talking about? We want to know. Uh, but no, but, 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 I, I don't want to go I, there. Yeah, and I, just... get, I get you. Hi, I get guys. You, but I just, I just don't. Shh, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't, don't, don't. You well, get no, it. Well, well, okay. someone, will, someone will make a comment and someone six rows down and go, shut up. They're going, no, you shut the fuck up. And then before you know it, like, you know, yeah. there's lots of threats and proper, shit. Proper, I've seen proper West Ham fans fighting each other in their end. In, in the, in the, yeah. in the there, there, is another, there is another possibility that could happen, and that's what happened when City played us in the Cup. Mm. And we, we just couldn't get out of our own half. They pushed us. They were so good, they just kept us hemmed in. That could actually work to our advantage against Arsenal, because then we're forced to play in a game. A lot of, a lot is going to depend. That's true. A lot, it a could, lot will it could actually also, work up on it. A lot will also depend how they come and approach this game on Man City and Liverpool's results coming up to North London derby as well. Because that That's could after us, isn't it? No, they're still going to play games, aren't they? Yeah, but I'm saying their games are after, isn't it? That's our next No, he's game, saying the results of Man City. No, Arsenal have got Wolves, league, Chelsea, impact how they Bayern Munich and then us. But Man City and Liverpool will also have games. Now, we mm. don't know how the point situation after today, you know, the Premier League. True. They, they could possibly come to us thinking we must win the game or no, we, we, we don't mind a draw. You know what I mean? Like they went to I get, I get where you're going. Yeah, yeah, I understand where you're going. So, I mean, yeah. you'd think that teams would just all be going at hell for level to win. Liverpool, see, now they're chasing. The team's chasing. They've got nothing to lose just, just to go for it. So that, that, that could either be Arsenal's undoing. They could do what we did at Newcastle, if they go to Wolves or even playing, they've got a really got to go for it against Chelsea, haven't they? At home. And yeah, but Chelsea, you know, are so, do you know what Chelsea? Know, are you, right? don't, you don't know what you're going to get with Chelsea. No, do you know but Chelsea's record? Chelsea, I don't think Chelsea have lost to any of the big six this season. Hmm. Hmm. They got two draws against Man City home and away. They drew with Liverpool. Hmm. Now they beat United. They drew with United. They beat Spurs. They drew with Arsenal at Stamford Bridge. I don't think Chelsea have actually been beaten in the big six games. They've just been spanked. Which, which is unbelievable because they're a mid-table mm. shit house. You can't, you can't mm. write it. Other thing with Arsenal is they have got a very, very good defence for the way mm. they play. The only thing that lets them down is it was what I warned my mates about it is that Zinchenko. Defence wise, yeah, he's, he's all crap. crap. He's all Going crap. forward though, he's good. But defence-wise, he is terrible. And that is their only weak spot in defence. I think Ben White is a very good right back. I, I watched think he don't about 35 um, minutes. Yeah, but do you really time. think do you really think Ben White can handle Timo Werner? I mean, come on. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, can... doesn't need to handle him. Just let him shoot. Mm. <laughs> 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 on, have a crack. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> they did Arsenal play in the first half. I only caught that 35 minutes of the second half, and I thought I couldn't see their midfield. I thought they that. You know what? Cover that was that was brilliant, mate. Seriously, fair play. That was brilliant. But he yeah. wins in life. He wins in life, Yeah. Do you know what? what? Just step step out of the way. Go on, Timo. Have a crack, mate. I feel safer. Yeah. You know what? The more the more I think about it, the more I think. You're so it's negative. Thing. You're so negative. <laughs> the more I think about this, the more I think it's a genuine tactic now. The <laughs> Arsenal will, will have to win that game, won't they? They'd be <laughs> desperate to win that game to have any chance of the league. So if we just allow them to push forward, 
we sit back, let them push us into our own half because we're basically crap, and then throw out a few desperate balls for the likes of Werner and Johnson to chase. Mm. We might just nick something. We could be terrible and get a result. Coover, could you could you could you imagine a conversation amongst the centre backs at Arsenal? You got like Saliba shouting out Ben White, push out, go to Werner, fuck off, let him shoot, <laughs> fuck him, let him have a crack. <laughs> go on, have a shot. Why the goalkeeper sitting there having a drink of water and it goes over the top? Yeah. Goofball, yeah. Just think about it. Or, or Werner and you score in an North London derby, you get legendary status among the fans. <laughs> yeah, Werner, Werner, if Werner scores in, in the North London derby, he'll be a legend. Sign him up. You'll be a legend. Right, that is my worst nightmare. Werner scores. He'll be an absolute <laughs> legend. He'll, he'll be bigger than the Werner gets a hat trick in the North London derby. Oh my gosh, I said the worst thing I saw. And you'll still hand you out. And you'll still hand you out, right? If, if Werner scores and the winner in that North London derby, I say buy him and build a statue and just have a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. what we do. We put a statue of him. You know what I mean? I don't. I, I don't care if he scores an hat trick, man. I still. I still don't want him bought. But if yeah, he does I, fair I, I, play I, to the men, if he does fair play, well done. We will all get our hands and knees. We, and we signed him. him. We signed but, him already, um, Dan. We signed him already. When he, if he scores in the North of London derby, his, his fate is sealed. My fear is they will sign him just as a squad player. Did Did, did you hear my analogy on what Werner is as a football player? He's, he's basically trying, like trying to play chess with a machine gun. <laughs> He's a poor man's son. He plays exactly how Son plays. Exactly. It's just he's finishing. I think Werner is actually a good player up until it comes to the final third. He's quick. He's good on his feet. He's got the oh, bottles to take yeah. around the player. But he, when it comes he's a good to what attacker matters, until he gets to the until he gets to the attacking end. Yeah. But when it comes to that final bit, he's he just can't do it, can he? So Dan, basically, he's not he's not a great player then because if that that's like a salesman. He, he does everything good until he gets to the cell, but he can't close it. Uh, that Sorry. is what I'm saying. That's why he gets sacked. That's why Lewis he gets sacked. Lewis Hamilton, say yeah. that, but, you know, Lewis so Hamilton is a great out, driver yeah. until it comes to race day. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just a shame I'm, he can't finish. If he could yeah. finish, he would be a good player, but he just he cannot do that. That's why he's a poor man's son. Exactly. That is my point. If he's that... Why you know what? The alarm bells million. should have gone There's off. A reason. It, 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 you know, a big Basically, he's a nice guy, a nice guy, but does just doesn't just doesn't get anywhere. You know what Mate, I mean? He's the German. He's the German Dan Juma. Let's have it right. Yeah, he's the mm. he's a German Dan Juma. He's not very really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> There's the occasional moments that excites the fans, but the reality is he shouldn't be at the club. I've just got a couple of super chats here from one from a user again. He says Conte said um, our home needs to be a fortress. It's far from it. Della Spurs, who's got the best name in the Spurs YouTube community. Uh, Stell, I think inconsistency or Spursy will continue under Ange because he himself shows inconsistency. It would appear with tactics, performances and even transfers and his project. Not finishing top four will begin the end. Do you agree with that, guys? Not finishing top four will begin the end. No, I'm not no, this mate. season. No, but not next this season. season, if you don't, then yes. But I agree in basically everything the fella just said. If I'm just hoping with what people have said that this is just Ange checking it out, wanting to do it his way, doesn't really care about the season, just wants to get this project going, and that he's going to make some changes next season, make changes for certain games and that. That is what I'm hoping for. But I can only yeah. go on what I see. I'm, I'm, I agree, moment, mate. I'm, I'm sticking to what I said earlier. I think... It comes down to if we are not looking like an improved team come Christmas, I think the pressure is massively on that. Then, um, I, what I want, I, I could live with. I know it won't fix all the holes in the squad. Four quality signings in summer. Then I ain't bothered if we keep Werner or not. Then, but they've said that's not happening. They've said they're going to go for quantity. So we're not going to get four quality signings. They've said they're going to go for quantity. Well, 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 I mean, quality consider, young players could work, I'm, though. I'm talking about quality. When I when we get linked with the players, we start going in for them. But when I've watched the videos of them, and I've probably got a lot of my group anyway up, they're ones that I particularly like because we've all got our favourites and I'm no, no doubt fans would disagree. But I'm talking about players that you like. Right? 
that you've seen on video as much as you can judge and that have done the data analysis on them. Because we if we're gonna kick on, we've got to get we've got to get players in. Give Ange a bit more choice. Give Ange a bit more quality, not just quantity. There, there's a funny comment in the chat saying um <laughs> I won't buy tickets in the South or North stand if Werner plays because I don't want the ball to smack me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how he put it over the top from where he was, I don't know. It's they should have a miss of a season, a miss of a season prize for him and Richarlison. You know when he missed them sitters away at Luton and things, even though he yeah. won, right? Be fair I mean, to Richarlison, he's actually scored a few goals this season when he's been yeah. fit. He has actually if, scored a few. If there's mental health issues and his fitness issues, if they're behind him, I, I still don't think <laughs> I still don't think he's good enough for us. But but or Emerson. So, mm. yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be fair to Richie as well. I don't rate him either, but since he came back and he had that spell of scoring goals, he was at least getting in the right positions. He looked more yeah. fluid. He, he did look more right. fluid on the pitch. I must admit, yeah, his movement but, was better. But I think what was it? Seven out of ten of the goals or whatever were tapping. But <laughs> he still scored, and that's what matters. Yeah, yeah. guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I do, I do want to, I do want to leave it on a bit of a on a fun vibe. Uh, we were so depressed at Newcastle, so fucking broken as as fans. We were sitting in a pub waiting for the train to arrive, so we're having a few beers, and <laughs> Iggy lost it. Right, this was a this was Iggy <laughs> after the Newcastle game after a few jars. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say something? Because I, I can nearly I stopped recording. As soon as he did that, these Geordies walked past and they're fucking giving Nicky tips like chucking money at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You got yes, oh, you got a laugh. Iggy, Iggy, you got, you got a laugh you, you, you're gonna Bob. cry. Oh, oh I love it. Yes, I love Iggy. He's the most oh, passionate man. guy going, bro, man. I'm honestly. Lost. In, in a sick lost way, it in a in a sick way I wish you could all go through what I went through at the end of last season where I just snapped and I just don't care anymore because these results don't affect me. It doesn't ruin my weekend anymore. <laughs> I couldn't yeah, yeah. it. I just think you become desensitized. <laughs> desensitized. You're just numb to it. Man. That game just pissed me off that much. I totally lost my rag on the show. I don't, I'm surprised it ain't been suspended or whatever. <laughs> that game just pissed me off that much. We've still got games. Don't worry. There's plenty. There's plenty of games to get you there. <laughs> don't, don't you worry about it. Um, just want to say a big thank you to Rob Frank, William, a user who. Put loads of super chats tonight. Thank you so much, a user. Being Avashak, Deo, uh, user X, and Della Spurs. Big up to all of you guys. Appreciate it so so much. Everyone in the chat tonight. Thank you. We've had about 400, 450 people watching the show live throughout. Unbelievable. Please make sure you subscribe to Mr. Box Office, to Dietrich, to Dan, uh, Coover and the Free Boys, uh, Adrian's Facebook channel, Die Hard's TT at Tottenham Till I Die, and to Tottenham Away. And I'll just go around quickly. Everyone can have their final say, and then we'll wrap it up. Dan, off you go, my man. We got two weeks until the Arsenal game. Fingers crossed. Let's just hope. Short and sweet. Um, Adrian, and you're not allowed to yeah. mention Troy Parrott. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Mr. Alex, don't pump up his channel right again. Right, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, realistically, we'll get to the end of the season, probably think, what the hell was all that about? All that angst? What was it about? You know, we'll have our European spot and we'll be looking forward to the transfer window. See who we bring in and getting excited about that. I think we can beat... Arsenal don't get many results at the first stadium. They got one last year, but we shot ourselves in the foot. It's going to be one of these two weeks like like these international breaks where we'll find, I'm sure we'll find something to talk about. Levy will do another PR stunt or something. that will go backfire or something and keep us all going. You know, it's only our angst that keeps us going as Spurs fans, I think. 
yeah, we're, we're, we'll be fine. We're going to be fine this season. We're going to be in Europe next year, sure of it. Alex? Alex. Um, I'm just off to go daydream. Um, so, I hope everyone's having have a good week. Um, uh, the good two weeks. Um, it's going to be bliss for me. And uh, keep watching Mr. Box Office TV, the main event, the Professor of Truth and Entertainment. Yours truly, because um, he's going to go big. Back to you still, I'm done. If you don't know, get to know. Back to me. Back to you, Dietrich. He's on mute. Dietrich, you're on uh, mute. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whoever thinks we're going to get a result against Arsenal, well, there's more chance of still going at Afro than us winning or getting a tie. Mm. Unfortunately, this manager is clueless. Get him out and I hate this fan base and get this freaking chairman out too. Loving the energy. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the energy. Lots yeah. of love from Dietrich there, go on. Isn't it? <laughs> Dietrich walks in and you can feel the charisma, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say about people like Paul Merson. His charm is only exceeded by his personality, and he's got no personality, right? <laughs> 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 how 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 is this conversation just trans in Akuma, save us <laughs> um no why bother I, I just don't give a shit mate um this season it's 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 a it's a transition uh hasn't been an improvement it's just the process of changing styles um we won't see if the board's serious about doing anything till the summer so until then, why worry about it? We can't change anything. If we have a shit summer with crap signings or lack of ambition all round, if we sign Timo Werner on a permanent, then start worrying about it. If we sign Timo Werner on a permanent and the rest of the signings are crap or cheap squad fillers like we've been doing, then hell with it. I'm, I'm not even going to bother talking about the team anymore at that point. I will just be leaving out and waiting for the owners to go. And I'm only going to then do shows next season where I'm messing about and not talking about football because I'll be mm. done. I really, a lot of people say they're done if something happens. I do mean it this time. I broke last season. I'm not going for any more of this shit. I'll, I'll so spend my time more. You give them you know a what? five year contract, yeah? Yeah. Do you know <laughs> what? We're, we're all going to die as well. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Dan. It's, Cheers. It's, it's an old one as well, I've said. It's a former <laughs> double act, mate. You don't, don't worry fact, about things too that much. That was the joke of it. Don't don't worry about things too much because another three and a half billion years, the sun explodes and nobody remembers any of this bullshit. No, exactly. Let's hope so. Le Levy will still be taking money from us somehow. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be putting the prices up for that because it's fireworks. There'll be like four thousand hotels in Tottenham. Um, Dietrich's Kane Super Chats started to go fund me for Stell to go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. Dietrich, thank you for your wonderful donation. I would also start a GoFundMe that you have the cojones to show your face on a live show. How's about that? Sorry, I, right. work, I, work, I work for the government, so I cannot show my face on YouTube. That's you work for the street. government? Well, yeah. they, they say that most... Politicians are frauds, so it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, Have you got a special car as well? No, unfortunately, I wish. Oh, okay. Guys, we're going to wrap it up. Um, cool. Yeah, look, for me, just a lot of the things I've been speaking about, just sick to death of conversations going on between Ange and the media and fans and everyone clinging on to every word as if it's gospel and mm. keeping Timo Werner. I, I personally haven't seen real change at Spurs yet. I haven't. And I'm going to wait till this summer, regardless of what happens in the next three, four games, I'm going to wait till the summer and then I will decide what's what. And I am kind of more leaning towards Kuba that, you know what, if this goes wrong, I'm fucking done as well. Because what, if it's not going to work with Ange, it's not going to work with anyone because we've tried everyone else. Every type of manager we've already tried. So, um, guys, listen, Alex, Dietrich, Kuba, Dan, Adrian, thanks for coming on, guys. Just letting us on. 
Uh, we'll be live tomorrow, 8.30 p.m. Tottenham away. Come join us, Iggy, myself, JP, everyone else, Mari, the crew, Lee, Maz, Will. And, yeah, we're done. Just say thank you once again to our channel sponsor, the Arsenal Tears Beer. Thank you. We appreciate you. Are you, you guys? Are you guys going live this Thursday? Yeah, North London is ours. Is definitely on this week. Hundred <laughs> percent up. Yeah, that's that's going to be that's going to be just another car make, crash, really. Make but sure listen, Stefan's there. Stefan, Stefan will be there. He said. He, he said. He, Stefan, Connor, TJ, and uh, G Chain. They're all going to be there. Sounds good. Should All right, good. guys, I'll leave you with this. Take care. Come on, you Spurs. Simple. We've got our Tottenham back. That's... that's... <laughs> the first game we look for, Robbie. Tottenham away. Tottenham away. When we got Tottenham, Tottenham away. Tottenham away. Tottenham away. Tottenham away. Tottenham away. Tottenham away. Tottenham away.